work, work, nine to five. Tell me, Mr. Boss, when I say goodbye, I never want to work another day in my life. I hate work. Work, work, work in a factory. Sweat my life in misery. Work like that never meant to be. Work like that is not for me. We're not going to work in your coming jobs. We're not going to die in your sticker wars. We're not going to vote in your phony elections. Take a good look at where your reflection. could say is just get ready for a friggin' wild show. This is going to be a banger. It is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Yes, it is Sunday. It is Sunday shout out day. Good to see everybody. The last show was great, man. That show we did with Vinny from Marauder. So we got a lot of momentum going into this one. And uh, how you doing, Gertie? What's happening to Story of Lou? Yo, wait till you, yo. Our guest today, yo, our guest today has some real Queens roots, man. We're going we're gonna to talk to him. Some real Queens roots, this guy. Who, who knew it? What's happening in Indiana, Davison? All right. Good, good. Yeah. Greetings from Poland. How's things in Poland? How's the weather in Poland? You know, probably about the same as the weather in New York, you know? But yeah. All right, UK in the house. All my UK people, man. This 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 show's got a big UK support base, man. You know? That's great. Hey, Big Rob, bitter uproar. Yo, yo, Rob, we're talking about some old school. Yo, we got we're gonna talk A7 today and CB Tompkins Square Park. This is this is for the OGs like you, Rob. This one. That's right. Yeah. Dublin, Dublin, Ireland in the house. Yes. Rainy, it's rainy in Poland, and the book and my book is great. Well, thank you, buddy. The second one is uh is being designed right now, you know, and Scotland, good. Listen, everybody's checking in. The Jersey Channel Islands. I'm not sure where the Jersey Channel Islands are. London, whoa, man, it's going down. Yo, it's going down, bro. What's up? What's up? And where are you today? I'm I'm in my boss's office here. <laughs> <laughs> he decided to sit in today to make sure I'm doing the right thing. I feel like we're like, you know, we're in New York, you know? <laughs> exactly. Man, yeah. I don't know if anybody is ready for today. I I'm Yeah, it's going to hit. I'm excited. Yeah, we're excited. excited so. We 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 have we have a uh, a vibrant guest, so we're yes. excited about that, man. This dude yes. it's going to be great, man. And 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 I I got a couple of things up my sleeve that that uh, you know, this is going to be good. This is gonna be. This is oh, gonna be for sure, life. for sure. Yeah. The uh, hey, want to see something cool? Look at this. I'm getting this framed. Made a nice enlargement. Ah. If you remember, remember a bunch of the me and a few hundred of my friends decided to stand in front of a sign. The uh, a, a mural. A, a mural, which was actually I'm not in the picture. So. Yeah, you but, you 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 took. How's Daryl doing? Is he still chewing on his leg? Yeah, his legs are getting a little better. The hair's starting to grow back a little, but. Poor he's bastard. got some, uh, he's got demons. 
you know? You know, it's, because you fucking listen to that music of, of, of the devil, bro. That's right. That's what it is. That's what it is. Hey, you know, it's shout out Sunday. And yeah. I want to shout out uh, a man named Greg Prado. I just, uh, this brand new uh, Lanigan biography, Mark Lanigan of the Screaming Trees, just came out. And uh, I have the honor of having a bunch of photos in this. This guy is an excellent New York writer. He's written a ton of books. I've worked with him a ton of times. And uh, always an honor to be a part of it. Um, he's a good friend of our friend Mitz as well. Right but on. I'm looking forward to digging into this. It just arrived in the mail. So uh, shout out to Greg Prado. Right on. Gary Gary says, has en has everyone seen Moby's punk movie? They just makes told me about appearance. that. It's worth the watch on YouTube. We will be talking about this film today. Because, yes, our guest is in this film. I saw the film. Uh, I'm talking to Moby about coming back on the show uh, to talk about his film. We will be talking about Moby's new film. But by popular demand, first things first, this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, is Photo of the Day. Boom. There you go. Photo of the Day. What is this? Is this? What is this? It wrong is. Answer, wrong answers only, please. What, what, who is this? What is this? Wrong answers only, please. Shout out to those shiny red ceiling pipes up there. <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it Menudo? <laughs> is it the, is it the, is it the punk rock vegan movie? <laughs> is it Danzig? Is it Kiss with No Makeup? Is it, is it Danzig? Is it Black Sabbath? Okay, N now, now we're getting, now we're getting down to, to, to Brad. Is it Fanny in the Pack? <laughs> now, listen, is it Pentagram? Is it the Scorpions? Fanny and the Packs. Is it Scowl? <laughs> Scowl's good. Yeah. Is it is it good one? Is it Ron Death Cycle? That's a good one. Oh. That's good. That's good. You know, here's another shot. Um, and I I I I thought that this might have been a little um inappropriate, but I, I'm I'm gonna post it anyway, because I feel like I'm missing the boat here a little bit, right? Um now now somebody said is it uh fanny fanny no not fanny in the pack for, for, oh, for fanny a bum bag a bum bag that's europe right they call it in europe it's a bum bag it's a fanny pack here you know i think that my stage attire is is dated because <laughs> i i didn't realize that this kind of thing was in to get on stage with your with your fanny pack on like I mean, this is like, this is a, is this a look? Is this happening now? Well, I guess if you don't want to lose your, you know, your, your stuff. Yo, I bring my shit on, on stage. stage. I bring yeah. my shit on stage. You know what I mean? Like, right, you know, we got to right. ask our guest when our guest comes on. Does he bring his <laughs> shit on stage? But I bring my shit on stage for the most part. But I don't like wear it on my body when I'm fucking screaming my brains out, you know? Yeah, I guess it's back. The pack is back. Bro, I got to dig in my closet, man, and, and dig out that fanny pack. You know, it's probably sitting there right next to the Paisley fucking shirts, you know? Oh, I, I remember that, that era of Drew. You know? Yeah. Um, so tell us, here, here's, here's, here is the, 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 here you go. I, I, it's the pack attack. Good one. The pack attack. <laughs> Running with All the right. pack. <laughs> Come on. Int Internet's acting slow today. So Yeah, I see that. I, I don't know what's going on, man. Yeah, Buffering. So. We'll Buffering. see. Yeah, I don't know. Not good. Uh-oh. Hopefully, hopefully it's not going to be that kind of a weird friggin' day. I think it's the Russians. Yeah. It's the Russian. Are you Russian? No, I'm taking my time. Um, yeah, I don't know. Looks like uh, 
Looks like the internet's well, fighting. So go while, ahead. While the worm is turning there, the uh, this was a, a little bit of a uh, of a departure. Uh, I went to a, a full scale death metal show. Uh, at there you the, go. Uh, there she is. That is Gia, the brand new singer. And in fact, she's wearing her vomit fourth shirt, which was you know, another. I was, I was trying to read the shirt, and you know, I wasn't sure what it said. Little did I know it said vomit fourth. Vomit fourth. They played. Uh, they played that show as well. It was a, a death metal show at the Meadows, and she just. This is her first show singing with a band called Coronary Thrombosis, and um, they played along with. Um, Exsanguinated, Vomit Forth, and the headliner being Internal Bleeding, who's, uh, you know, old school. This is old school Long Island here. Oh, and a band called uh, Torturous Inception. <laughs> can, so. can, can, can I, can, we're going to bring our guest on soon, but he just sent me a message. Keep your passport and money near <laughs> re re regarding, regarding the fanny pack. But bro, this is like a local show, man. This is a local band. <laughs> Yeah, no, these are New York guys, and uh, and this was like I said, this was her her maiden voyage with them, and you know the place was was jammed, and everybody was you know having a great time. It's it's a whole other subculture sure. of metal, the death metal thing, and I love watching death metal bands live. Uh, it's only a handful do I really listen to, you know, in the comfort of my own home. Mm -hmm. But uh, but they were great, and Torturous Inception was great. It was a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and uh, very similar to our scene, just a little more. Uh, they all sing from their guts. I don't know what's going on there, you know. I, I, Anthony says, "Glad to see medical terminology is well represented in death metal." Well, I was literally like googling because you know you get the shirt where you have to you're like trying to figure out what the shirt says. Yeah, you know. And I, I Googled coronary thrombosis, and apparently it's uh, it's like blood clots in the heart. So nice. It's a All thing, right. you know, but they were great, and it was a lot of fun, and I wish her luck. It was her first show with the band. So, uh, you know, listen, you know what? A lot of our bands, bands like Ache walked the line, walked walk the death metal line oh, a little yeah, bit, for you sure. know? For sure. You know? And uh, who, by That's the way, right. I saw Ake is opening for Fishbone. That's going to be pretty awesome. At the, at the Gramercy, yeah, I saw so, that. So, but yeah, it was right. a fun. Anybody you want to shout? Anybody you want to shout out? I already shouted out Greg Prado. I'm going to shout out Daryl. I don't want to wake him up. He's we're obviously keeping him awake. But um, no, all good, man. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for Dave, and uh, I got to put a seatbelt on for this one. Yeah, get ready. Hang out. This I'll bring you back fun. on. Oh later, yeah. Man. Oh shit. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later, man. <laughs> and now he woke up, see? I'll see you. Well, there you have it. This is the one, the only. <laughs> Get ready. Put your seatbelt on the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. And we're sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Generation Records, Upstate Records, and 126 Hardcore Clothing are a streetwear brand for restless individuals who don't compromise. They're about being positive, spontaneous, and true to your hardcore self. For years, they experimented with several printing methods and materials and collaborated with a large number of designers and illustrators, always giving room for fresh perspectives while retaining the hardcore attitude. Get in touch with them. Ramp up your game. www.126hardcoreclothing.com. Come on now, the Texas Silver Rush. They're a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene in Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces, as well as to style them for stage, album covers, promo photos, and social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Rollet, Ringo Starr, and of course, your friends and mine, Agnostic Front. Information and online sales are being taken at their Facebook and Instagram pages, and of course, www.thetexassilverrush.com. That said, let's clear the deck. Let's bring our guest on. Get your shoes and socks on, kids. It is right around the corner. Here we go. We make sure there's no, no massacre going on in, in, in the chat room. Vinny Doak, what's up? LaRouche, what's up? LaFada, what's up? Long Island in the house. Yo, listen, get ready. Here we go, all right? Today's guest 
is an American singer-songwriter hailing from Long Island, New York. He is the founding member of the band MDC, a.k.a. Millions of Dead Cops, Multi-Death Corporations, Millions of Dead Children's, Children, and Millions of Damn Christians. The founder of Radical Records and was involved in the Rock Against Reagan campaign in the early 1980s. Currently appearing in the new punk rock vegan movie directed by a friend and supporter, Moby. Please welcome, coming at us from Austin, Texas, Mr. Dave Dictor. Aha! Yo, yo, hi. <laughs> nice nice yo. to see you today, Drew. New York Hardcore Chronicles show. I'm glad to be part of it. New York Hardcore Chronicles live with Drew Stone. I'm happy you're here, man. I have a good feeling about this. I'm happy to be everywhere. You know, uh, <laughs> nice to be with you. You know, my, my soul is my soul is in New York. And then uh, uh, I don't know where you are this minute. Manhattan. I'm in Manhattan. I'm in you're Manhattan. in Manhattan. You were right ground zero. I'm in ground and, zero, uh, man. And I love always floating around New York. Uh, I remember yep. as a kid taking a subway when I was like seven or eight into <laughs> Grand Central, you know, into into Times Square <laughs> and looking around all the theaters. I was seven, eight years old and went back out to Jamaica where I lived. And uh, New York's always a treat. I was just walking down the street when we played with Napalm Death and we had... You know, I had some ramen out, and you just don't know who you're going to bump into. Yeah, it was, uh, it was yeah. a sad day. It was the day we learned, uh, uh, you know, the DH Peligro died of the DKs. But uh, we just came through New York. We're coming through again with GBH. I love you guys. You know, yep. I went to school PS82. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let let me let's start with this. All the monkeys in the zoo oh, go to on. PS82. <laughs> How did you how did you come up? Did you grow up in a musical household? How did music come into your life? You know, I mean, I am I'm one of those fortunate people that grew up in New York and born in 55. And there was like just so much going on. There was just so much going on from Jackson Pollock to Dizzy Gillespie, the Newport Jazz Festivals. I was telling you before, New York World's Fair, the Guggenheim. Carnegie Hall, Radio City Music Hall, and just catching some of that. My mom took me to plays. I got bitten by the bug. She bought me, uh, She Loves You and I, I Want to Hold Your Hand, a Beatles, and it got it for me fresh. I think it was 1963, first record I owned. And then I knew I either wanted to pitch for the Yankees or play in a, you know, a great punk rock hardcore band <laughs> with a New York-based singer. <laughs> Hey, dirty, you know, dirty, I, I, dirty. I, I, I got to ask you, you mentioned it. We talked about this a little bit before, but I, I love what I got a picture here. The Were you at the World's Fair in Queens in 64? I, I went to the World's Fair in Queens, two different occasions. I was there. I was nine years old. Futuristic spaceships, they the Japan pavilion. They have different countries pavilions and they all gave their their shape of what the 60s would be. And it was yeah. a total Jetsons kind of thing going on. It was arty. It was all that. It was beautiful. It was out yep. there by Shea Stadium. Yep. And with the globe there off the Grand Central Parkway. And uh, yep. I loved it. You know, I, I and uh, eventually I made it out and uh, lived in, uh, you know, I went to Shea and lived around Flushing. My parents worked in Flushing. Then they moved out to Long Island. I lived in Seacliff and Glen Cove. And uh, I was a cover from Glen Cove, from the, the wow. Long Island of Long. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I went to Glen Cove High School, and I went to Nassau Community hey, hey, College. Did you, go, did, did you did you go to PS eighty two in did Queens? I go to what PS eighty two? I went yeah. So all the monkeys in the zoo. Uh, I, I yeah. went to PS eighty two uh, first second grade. I went to Immaculate Con uh, Conception. Uh, our, uh, our Lady, Our Lady, Lady of Our Lady of Our Lady of Perpetual Hell. Our Lady <laughs> OLPH in the cellars of OLPH. <laughs> They are, brave. they are both for the whiskey that the whole talking about the nuns and the sellers of OLPH. But I went to Catholic boys camp up Camp St. Joseph and Monticello, Dominican brothers. I was brought to all that. So I was damaged like everybody else watching all yeah. the shit. But I was so young. It didn't lay on me. I was just walking through life. And I just, I just saw all those different things. And there's Andy Warhol, Velvet Underground, John Lennon. 
God damn, the Guggenheim, everything was just great. The Newport Jazz Festivals, Louis Armstrong walking around with his thing, taking the, the, the ferry out to the, to, to the you know Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty, all those things. He's hunting for a dime bag on, on 2nd Avenue on 8th Street, you know. <laughs> that, was, that was my ticket when I was out in Glen Cove, like 16. We want to get high. We, we do, we're going to go meet the Rasta guys on 2nd go, Avenue. We're, we're, yeah, we're gonna go into the city and go to Union Square Park and get some two and alls and second alls. Uh, and we we get some. Uh, go to Malmo's Falafels in the village. Oh yeah, come on now. And, and that, oh, yeah. that was a big meeting. It's still guy. there. You know, we you know, go to a concert, lose each other at Humble Pie, and they say we're gonna meet at Malmo's after the show. You know, Mamoons is still there. Mamoons is still there in that location. I, I, as a matter of fact, I had a Mamoons not long ago, yeah. and uh, I was amazed and very glad to see they were still there. They're yeah. they're a good falafel. They were great back in the day. It was I remember? We're talking about the food there, uh, Stromboli's, and uh, you know, you know, St. Mark's, you know, yeah, on Third Avenue there. That one that yeah. used to be there is not there anymore. B &A, yo, you know what's still there? You know what's still there? B and H Dairy. You know, right on, on right on off St. Mark's. B and H Dairy is still there. That place is great. I, I don't know that. I remember the, they had yeah. a vegan bakery there. We're heading to Thompson Square on June 11th for all, all you New Yorkers. Everyone's on the guest list. Playing for free, having a good time in New York City. Life is beautiful. I'm 67. My life's just beginning. I'm warming up. You know, I, I go ahead. I'll flash. I, I, uh, David Insmerger wrote this book. No war, no KK, no fast. You say I wrote this book. It's on. It's on Manic D Press. Uh, memoir from Damaged Civilization. I I got. I just took some books. I love Harley's book. We played with Harley last year in Hamburg. He's another sick, crazy New Yorker. Uh, we did the Peace Comp uh, reissue. This is the original one. This is the reissue on on uh, Grimace Records. I'm working with Grimace Records. We did Punk for Ukraine, and uh, and we we've done four of these. We're working on the fifth one. We're raising fourteen hundred dollars so far. We're gonna have a lot more money for. We're giving it to Docs Without Boys. We're also giving it to like soup kitchens in Ukraine. We're just gonna look that up now. Life is so beautiful, man. Hey, let me. So let I me ask you. you. We get millions of dead carrots. This is the <laughs> Polish thing. You have some people from Poland. They were, we played Poland last year. Bialy Bielaski in South Poland. You got a great <laughs> heart. For you. Those people are true. Those people are and, really true. And I love you, man. It's so fucking good to be with you, Drew Stone. It's good to see you, Dan. I'm hey, hey. I feel like I'm talking to all New York. I'm talking to everyone. <laughs> I miss. You know, it's just kind of like. You know, um, I don't know. You know, I just, you know, we reunited uh, MDC like 2001, 2002. Now hold on. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold it. Hold it. We Let hung out with Guy Gabby from Molotov Cocktail back when he worked sound at CBGB's. I mean, we, we, we were there, you know, 1982 and 83. Dave, let me ask you. Hold on. Let me let me try to get some semblance of, of, of order. You you went you went to college in Boston, right? I went to seven different colleges. I, I was, you know, my, my mom fucking loved me. She loved me. She just loved me. And she said, well, what do you want to do? And I go, well, you know, I'll, I'll try Boston University. And I went there to try to, like, I, I heard Kurt Vonnegut was teaching a course. And, and he was, and the class, the class got, the class got froze out. I was too slow, ah, you know, you know, yeah, and. Yeah. But I found Boston. I lived in Kenmore Square. I lived, uh, and I was just trucking around Boston. I ended up out in Marblehead. I went wow. for three. I went for three semesters in all. I lived in the middle, middle, mid tower on Seven Hundred Commonwealth, and we just played the club there. That's on Commonwealth. What's the name of that place? Um, the place on Commonwealth, the club. Oh, anyway, uh, Middle, uh, East? Middle East. What? The Middle East. No, no, not not TT not, not and the Bears and not, not the Middle East. But anyway, I won't slow down the Street? conversation. Don't, don't worry about it. If it's a big yeah. club, we played with Napalm Hey, Death. look. Hey, hey, look who tried Our old friend Al Baril from SSD. Al Baril. Al Baril is such a beautiful human being. I love you, Al Baril. Hey, so, so, you, so you go to college in Boston um, and uh, you end up 
I know you start doing now. I think I, I, I got real Rocky Mountain High with my acoustic guitar. Is that what this is? Is that friends. what this is? This was it. This is early pictures. That yeah. I'm like 18, 19 in that picture. We went out to Montana and just said, We're gonna live in Yellowstone National Park forever. Work at West Yellowstone and just put logs on the fire and practice guitar and wait to meet Willie and everybody else we were planning to meet back in, you know, 74, 75, 76. I was more country-ish. I, I went to bluegrass festivals. Uh, they on. liked the rhythm guitar player. And I Hang worked on my rhythm because I wasn't a natural musician, but I just kept on going. Hey, what, what bluegrass What bluegrass did you love? And did, what bluegrass, like... I like the you... Open and the Way album, David oh, Chris. Oh, come man. on now. Yeah, you know... Woo! He used to be a friend of mine. He, you know, I followed it all. He Doc used to Watson. be a gambling man, just yeah. like you, until he sang so low. He, he, he old fashioned Doc Watson made the circle be unbroken. Wow. You know, I was 16, 17. I was fighting nuclear power. I was discovering just who I am and what I want to do in my life. And, um, and you know, it was, it was a really interesting time to grow up. The Vietnam War passed. Nixon resigned. I went off to college. I was musically interested. And, you know, punk rock kind of was right there, you know. And I kind of went to Max's Kansas City. And I was just up for everything. I went to see the Rolling Stones at Madison Square Garden. You know, all my friends were deadheads. And I wanted to broaden my horizons. And then I kind of, you know, became aware of Johnny Cash and Willington. Of course, it was Johnny Cash. Because when I grew up on AM radio, a boy named Sue was all over. Sure. If you were in New York, nineteen seventy-two, and they had all those sensibilities. Listening to Howard Stern, worked yeah, in yeah. a parking lot in New York, uh, made some of the mo best money ever made in my life. Parking car there you go. in New so, York City. So, so you, you're in New York. You're doing kind of the folk thing, and you you end up, excuse me, you end up in Texas, and you. Get uh, is it was the reject? Isn't it? I, I wrote, I was telling you before, you played I Hate Work. I wrote that song at a pizza place. I hated my job and it was making me deliver to all these frat boys. And I was just, just tired of it, you know. And uh, and I got went in the bathroom and I, I wrote out I Hate Work. I took it to the Chicano bar, which had an open mic night on Monday nights, and I played it. And like, you know, the, the 30 punks that were there, like, whoo, whoo, get a band. You need a band, blah, blah, blah. And right at that time, I met Gary Floyd of the Dicks. And he, he was just this punk. He was a Sid Vicious meets, divine meets. And, and where was this? Pure love machine. The was Dicks are incredible. Austin? Was this in Austin? This was in Austin. This yeah. is in Austin. I lived there from 76 to 82. Okay. And uh, I toured the West Coast in 81 and kind of played with Black Flag, played with Dead Kennedys. They Hold were, on, we'll, we'll very, all that. very cool. We had each other's phone numbers back when phones were expensive. And we called each other, Chuck, can you give me a, a number for, you know, for for Dallas or for somewhere? You and we me. gave numbers back. And that's how we did it with Ian Mackay. Wait, can I tell you? Whoa, 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 whoa. I got to tell you something. Great guy. Yo, I got to tell you something. I remember when Black Flag came to town. And Chuck Dukowski gave us Exxon's credit card number, and we fucking we made phone calls for a month on on those those guys had the credit card numbers back then. The black flag yes. guys. Uh, we, we, yeah, we were all working them. We even had this yeah. machine that made the sound of a quarter. Yeah, yeah. And we put it up there, uh, yeah. and that was a great time. All you know that that was just what we scammed to be punks to get by. But the, the brotherhood and the sisterhood of those shows. You know that we're at at, at you know at, at CBGBs at the A7. It was incredible that for those first pits going around with Harley and Booby and Sharuki. But wait a second, we're gonna get to that. What is this? Tell us about the first band. Was it the Rejects? And this then... was the Stains. Okay, tell us, and, uh, tell us about how Ron the Posner, came together. As Ron Posner to stage right, you know, to my left as I'm looking at this, he's playing guitar. The guy with the glasses was a guy named Andy from the Delinquents, and he was just subbing in for us. And that was a drummer that we played with, Colin Jones. And we were the Stains, and I'd written John Wayne, and I'd written I Hate Work. I had already had Chicken Squawk. I had a few other songs. And this we jumped up on stage somewhere. And, you know, you know this is back in the day where there was 200 punks in every city. 
and yeah. you know you played every odd little thing you could play you know the you know the vegan restaurant or you know almost like the aquarium or something you just play anywhere you could play yeah and back then they'd let you play in public you know i must say i, I the kids trying to be artists and you know and savor their art it's really hard these days you know you've got to pay a thousand a month rent and another 500 in bills and keep your teeth clean and and another 500 to eat and all of a sudden you need two or three thousand dollars a month just to pass and go and yeah. you, there's no time for being in ours you work and you know, next thing you know you're too tired all you want to do is watch you know netflix and chill and uh <laughs> it, 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 it you know it's uh unfortunate <laughs> that only only the rich get to be artists or something but, hey, uh, wh wh why did the stains turn into MDC? What, what well, was well, we that? booked ourselves at the stains with the Dead Kennedys, and Black Flag turned to the gig in Cosa Nostra, uh, Cosa Mesa, California. It was uh, somewhere like July 24th, 1981, and called it the Battle of the Stains. And, and the Stains had a Chicano president, wild, crazy singer, trench coat, bring swords on stage. And he came up to me into my backstage and said, I hear you're the stains. We're the stains. I go, we're not the stains anymore. You are the stains. We are getting a new name. And at the same time, I heard there was stains in Portland, Oregon, stains yeah. in, in Australia, stains in England. I was like, uh, I, I kind of realized the world wasn't my little Texas backyard. And Texas scene was really beautiful. Let me, you know, shine on the big boys. Fenders, the Jicks. It was sure. really this wholesome, beautiful scene, just like New York was. New yeah, York yeah. really was a great scene in 81, 82. And I knew, I know Vinny Stigma and Harley and what it was for all of us to show up, play our music, blah, blah, blah. You know, hey, and hey, there's, a, hey, hey, there's a request, a request to see your shirt. Tommies and this and that. I didn't care. I'm a human being, first of all. I love all those mofos. But they were wrong back then. They got Love Machine on. They all became. Probably, probably Vinny's a vegetarian right now. <laughs> hey, Dave, everybody wants to see your shirt. What's with the shirt? Let me see the shirt. That is millions of dead clones. Star Wars. Nothing but Star Wars. Ba -ba -ba -bum. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, I keep doing new styles of art with MDC. And uh, I got like 40 shirts. I love my life. I love who I am. I started this hey, art. you know what? Hey Matt, hey Matt, you out you there? Can too. You ready? You're a New Yorker. All you people in New Yorkers, Boston, Pennsylvania, you got it. You guys got the magic. You got it dialed in. You just got to decide. Matt, if you're ready, give me a thumbs up. You got to decide to live that dream. Hey, I want to bring a friend of ours, uh, Matt Gray. Hey Matt, you you got something, right? I got one of my most iconic shirts. I bought this from Our Radical Records, probably 87, 88. The original I corporate. Shirt. I made burger. that shirt and I mailed it to you. Yep. Wow. I probably got it for six or seven dollars. Yep. That I ordered the shirts for great $6. condition. That was 25. You could see through it. I uh, printed my old band on the back of it, silk screen my old band. And as you should, corporate <laughs> Jeff Berger with Skank and Ronald. I want, right there. I, want, I want to thank all the people that have ever bought my t shirts. Without and then I got merch, this one. Without I had to up it. your artists and your bands and thank you so much. You got the new one. And That's then I got this out. one too. Clan Cop. I like you, Matt. Gray. Iconic. Yeah, Matt, Matt Iconic. Afterwards, let's get in touch. We all know. <laughs> I love Drew Stu. New York Rock Hardcore Chronicles. That's what we are. Right on. Hardcore punk rock New Yorkers. We good feel shit. Hey, Matt, good shit. Awesome. We I told you I had it. some good stuff. That's an original shirt. And he made it and sent it to you. I yeah. know, yeah. I bought it with the it came with the peace comp. I got it right here, the peace comp, the original oh, peace comp. Too. What's the peace comp? Let me see that. This is this is the C D version of it. Ah. And we re just released it. There it is. Oh yeah, ah. he's, he's got the real thing. I and I got the what we just did, the new C D. You can get it from Grimace Records. I was telling you before, I'm doing Comes uh, with the zine. Ukraine, which is which is the peace comp now that I put that magazine together, my friend. Yeah. Matt. Wow. And uh, good it, shit. It was, it was like my college dissertation. <laughs> oh I <was> shit! <laughs> I was feeling political, and I, I did the millions of dead children about water and food 
and hunger. I did multi-death about Central America, the Green Berets, toppling governments, Argentina, Chile, right Pinochet, all that stuff. I know you kids are just, you know. I you love know, smoke you, signals. You that was a great record. 99 Yankees. You guys are kids. <laughs> you guys I love you smoke know, signals. You don't know who Ron Swoboda is or Clown <laughs> Jones. <laughs> Ron Swoboda or uh, Joe Pepitone. Joe Pepitone. I saw Joe Pepitone play at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. I, I saw Elson he, Howard play. He was a beloved. Joe Elson Pepitone was played. a beloved I character. Mick, Mickey didn't play the day I went. Hey, Matt, I'll see you later. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Matt. Dave, nice You're to meet you, brother. Hank. Cheers. Thompson Square I'll, Park. I'll so, see you there. Uh, GBH at the Gramercy Theater with MDC. And that's uh, May 7th and May 5th in Long Island. For all you still people clinging on to the island, I wish you well. Boy, Long right Island's on. scary when they lose their electricity. They don't get it back for two weeks now. It's like living in Puerto Rico. Believe it or not, living in Great Nick, it's like living Much in love. Puerto Rico. Uh, New York's flooding anyway, too. What, what? New York's flooded. We got like 20 years before we're underwater, right? Is that right? That, that, that's what they're saying? You know what's uh, really, yeah, really, like, something really I, what I love? I love Hamilton. I love right. to play Hamilton. He's a Hamilton fan. Hey, I, I want to be Hamilton freak. Hey, I, I live with a ten-year-old who loves Hamilton, who sings it at the breakfast table. I want to talk. And to I'm, you I'm about an this American show. studies major. There it is. Right. NBC SSD controls Al Barrill at, at, at the Gallery East. With this. At the Gallery right. East, uh, Paul Shaver, my lawyer, uh, was at the show. And uh, gosh, the, the famous guy who, who put on that show is uh, the boy. Dwayne Lucia from Gallery East, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, so I got, there's a, there's I got a radio wait. guy. I'm, I'm, I'm having a, my brains farting out. I got photos here that have never. A guy been named seen. Al. Al Burrell. Al, not Al Burrell, but another Al who does the radio show. Who does the radio show? Mel, uh, I feel bad. I'm not I don't remember know that his one. Name. But hey, these are these. I, I gotta say, my brain's got an expiration on. These are Here I am singing with never Ron been Posner. Seen. Never it's, been seen. I'm trying to guess who it is from looking in the background. That looks like Felix of DRI. See the kid with his arms folded. Ah, he he, he wasn't over on Ron's shoulder. Al that, Quint. That's Felix of DRI. Al Quint? Kid. That's my friend Mark Dubicki right behind him. I think that's in Austin, Texas, somewhere. Is that no? This is the Gallery East in Boston. Oh, that's Gallery East. All right, great. Yeah. Great, great, are great. Are you talking about Al Quint? That wasn't that wasn't Felix. That's Ron Posner on guitar. One of the yeah. great double stroking guitars. Him and Doctor Doctor No are some of the best best double stroke and downstroke uh, guitar players. Here's another one. These have never been seen before. Uh, these are taken by Angela Orangio. Um, she sent me a couple of them. These have never been seen before. Here's another one. All right, there I am. Yeah, I got that eagle shirt, like that shirt, like America. I forget what it said on it, some kind of slogan on it. You know, I was going for my deep America thing. We played Boston. We played the Boston Common. Yep. Back in the day, like a year later. But a year later. This was a great this was show. The first, this was the you first time story we were in the show? You know what I want to know the story behind the show? Yeah. Sure. Uh, we got in touch with them because I got in touch with, with Ian and he put me in touch with Al Burrell and, and Springer and they brought us up there. But when we get there, I hear they're kind of, you know, they're like, oh, you know, they're just not quite sure about our sexuality. They're wondering who the gay guy is <laughs> in MDC. And I claimed it was me and my manager, Tammy. And uh, we weren't sure how it was going to go. And we had this pig pile. It was the fucking greatest show in the coming together of Boston and Austin, Texas. There's, there's a Boston, Austin access. I fly yeah. back and forth, Logan to Bergstrom. Here's, here's one that's in color. Uh, she didn't take this, but this was in my archive. No one's ever seen this one. Look at this in color. Pig pile. That's the pig pile. Yeah. Al Baroque can tell you about the pig pile. Yeah. That was really great. That you know, I, I just sat on top. Everyone, they do like a pyramid, and then just everyone would crash onto it. Here's here's a shot here. Another, like I said, these these have never been seen before. But this one from Gallery East. You're on the left, and that's you. You're singing with. Uh, hold on, come on. 
Come on. You're singing with Springer. If I could get it to pop. Fuck. Hold on. Let's see. But yeah. And then. Hold on. Come on. Internet's acting funny. Um, it, it'll it'll come up. Something 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 ain't right. But there it is. There you on the left with uh, All right. Springer. You and Springer. That's great. That's Ron Posner in the middle of the guitar. That's Franco Morris on bass with me singing with Springer. That's no doubt about it. Everyone with those short haircuts. Yeah. We were hardcore. All the kids had the X's on their hands and they meant it. Yep. That was a straight edge scene. Yeah. Last, here's here is another one from Angela. Uh, Thank you, Angela. From, yeah. The, the, these I just saw these the other day. Look at you know. Yeah. Look at me there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Up against the pole. That yeah, was a I great. Was that, my, that, I was that doing was, my dramatic hardcore for them. I was you know. Uh, you know, there was, you know, I was like four or five years older than everyone. I still am. Yeah. You know, Al Burrow is probably 59 or 61 or 62. And, you know, Springer and all them. And I was, I was already 25, 24. Yeah. You know, uh, it, was, it was so great to create American hardcore. We did it, everybody. We created our own art form with our own reality, with our own. Yeah, they are really great. Great pictures. Who, who's saying, this playing guitar? Your comment sheet. Who's this Ron playing guitar? Is, Dave, who's playing guitar here? That's Ron Posner, the original right. guitar player of MDC. He's one of the greatest. He's like a Dr. No, you know, double stroking rhythm right. guitar player in that very unique hardcore sound. The Bad Brain's got it. He, he picked it up from that. But he had he put his own twist on it. He is a classical player, and he wrote the first album and the first two EPs, the Multi Death Corporation, and so so there's a fire again. Don't so be Dwayne, late. Dwayne Dwayne from Ga Dwayne from Gallery East. He was on the show, and and, and I know because I, I was in Boston at the time, and I was at the show. But the you know uh, millions of dead cops is 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 Mark. Oh, Ross. too it was too hard for the street cops. It was and they it was came in. They came in before the show and said, "What is this?" You know, I offended everybody. You know, in the Northeast, everything that was going on, it was scary time. 72, yeah. 74, 76. You get your ass kicked getting off the wrong subway in New York, or for that matter, in Boston. It was tough times. There was racial times with busing in Boston. You know, this is what led up to afterwards. That's why they were so, at first, so conservative. Yeah. Because, you know, Southie and Boston used to be somewhat socially conservative. And they've really opened up, you know, and dropkick Murphys. And, you know, they, they, they've gotten more, you know, introspective and just realized we're all dealing with our own different world, different sexualities, different realities. And to be so judgmental on other people's for theirs just not the way to roll. Mm. It's not the way to roll. I'm looking at the camera. Not the way to roll. Not. Wanna... Just freaking not. Just like, and just as much as I eat meat, I don't eat meat. I'm a vegetarian. And, you know, no matter what you tell me, I'm going to tell you, yeah, goddamn, you know, something's got to die for your food. And I that wanna... brings us to the, Mo the Moby Vegan movie. Well, no, we're not there yet. Hold we're on. We're not there yet. We're going. All right. Oh. Hold on, because I want I want to talk about this show that 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 when I think about the shows I saw back in the day, this was one of the most wild and incredible shows. It was MDC SSD control and minor threat at Irving Plaza. Yeah, that I, I sent you a picture before, which I was playing at that show. Yeah. It was really great. We were living on the streets in New York. We almost represent got to represent New York that show, and it was Boston and DC in town. It was a great show. Ian was incredible. It had that close energy. If you look there over Ron Posner's shoulder or my guitar player, that's Booby. Yeah. Remember Booby? Of course. And uh, of course, he's now a healer and a yeah, uh, you know, a yep. back pain expert, um, and acupuncture, Chinese ac healing, acupuncture, Chinese acupuncture. healing. Yeah. And yep. if you look through all that whole crowd, you would just see 
person after person, you, you know, from our scene. And it was a great show because the Boston kids came, the DC kids came, and we all like showed each other what we're doing hardcore. And there was a little bit of grudge match and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, oh, we're going to kick your ass. Blah, blah, blah. I never had any of that. I was just, I loved it. I thought I was glad to be there. And, and for me, you know, personally for me, from the beginning, I'm Italian, um, English, and I'm Jewish, Russian Jewish. All my families wouldn't talk to each other and did, you know, kind of excommunicated their children for marrying each other. You know what I mean? That was the old New York. You stay in your own group. And so right away, that division of I'm hanging with my kind, you know, and that's what broke down through the years. I'm so proud and happy for New York. Everyone got cool. And there's Ian singing himself. There's Booby, there's Booby behind, behind him. him. Yep. You know, look at the crowd of people. It's- this show, I'll tell you something about this show. I, I knew that this show was going to be was pretty historical. I brought my little brother to this show. You know, he was like yeah, 14. Yeah. Good one to take I, I, everyone to. I brought him, I had, and he'll never, like, he was 14 or 15, 15 or 16 maybe. And I said, yo, you got to come with me tonight. And I brought him to that show. Yeah. Good show to get taken to. Yeah. And uh, and good for you. Hey, here's your, uh, here's your, you, you know, you, you sent me, you sent this to me. And this is our, our friend, Booby. And a lot of New Yorkers here watching the show remember this. This was the cover of The Village Voice. And it was uh, Booby and Harley on the cover of it. Um, I, have, I have a better shot of it. And the article, which, which, the, the article which I never forget, is called Slam, Slam Dancing the Night Away. Uh, <laughs> it was wild it, times back there in New York. I remember going to the Mud Club in 1980. I came up to New York. I hung out at Reagan Youth, went to the Peppermint Lounge. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was wild in the streets kind of time. You know, the Agnostic Front people, John Joseph, the Harley, uh, you know, Booby, Sharuki, the, the yeah. Cause for Alarm guys. And then, you know, Ray B's. Ray B's a beautiful soul. And uh, I hung with him many different nights and played with him in Chicago. Not too, not too, you know, uh, I mean, and he died soon thereafter. I forget exactly when Ray died, but I hung out in basements with him and, and uh, I like, I love Ray Bees. I want to well, ask you, I want to ask you about a friend of ours. I, I, I always cite him as like the unsung hero of the exactly. early New York hardcore scene. And, and that's, and that's Jerry Williams. Could you tell us about your relationship with Jerry? Jerry Williams was a beautiful soul. He was bad brains, sound man, helped bring out that big takeover sound that they created. You know, he gave it that majesty and incredible. And, and we, you know, we had a big divorce in punk rock with the bad brains. We did. We invited him to come play our hometown. We were on tour with him, kind of getting along. You know, they were weird. They were Rasta, you know, just telling us, you cannot do this. You cannot talk to this gay person. You cannot, women should do not belong on tour. And we had a female manager who was my girlfriend. I go, you know, I don't know who, you know, I mean, tell that to somebody freaking else. And I mean, I I know you're a holy man and you're tapping into the Rasta culture, blah, blah, blah. And I'm an old rabbi, my fucking self, you know, Catholic boy school rabbi. You know, I don't need to be preached down to and, 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 and be sold homophobia and, you know, and all the phobias. He was, he was blood clot faggots should die. All right, you know, no, no, no. I love him. Glad he got into the, you know, Hall of Fame. They were incredible. My guitar player sounded like him. Jerry Williams was their sound man. That's him in the middle there, with uh, leaning on the pole. Beautiful soul. Love to smoke marijuana. And uh, that's Franco on the door. He played bass with us, and he's passed too. You mm-hmm. know, we had two bass players. We had Michael Donaldson. In our band, the bass players are the one who keep dying. Not, not, not the drummer, the bass not player. The drummer likes band. Final Tap. It's, yeah. Uh, uh, and it's not fun, you know. Three of my band bass players who, you know, you love. You know, mdc has been a family. We've had about 16, 18 members from the beginning playing bass, guitar, two or three drummers, you know, four, five, six bass players, six, eight, ten guitar players through the mm. years. 
Uh, I moved back to New York area in 1999, and I started playing, I was hanging out with Gabby from Molotov Cocktail. He's doing Sounds of CBGBs. Really fun, great history in there. We played the Sea Squat with Sturgeon. We played Thompson Square Park many times. Hey, I, I got one for you. Yeah. June 11, June 11. Be there. You're on the guest list, everybody. Buy a shirt from me and stuff. Hey, like- I, I, got one, I got one for you. Uh, I remember this. This was great. This was Rock Against Racism in Central Park at the Naumburg Band Show. That, that is incredible. We played with the Bad Brains that day. It was 1982. Um, that was a great day. It was the first time I played with the Bad Brains live. It was just a great crew. Uh, the Yippies were putting on these incredible shows. Yeah, they, they were, were great. throwing marijuana joints out to the crowd. It was just RAR. It was Rock Against Racism. It turned into the next year, Rock Against Reagan. And we ended up doing 37 City Tour. Played all. We played Amherst. We played the hey, Boston didn't you play, Common. Did you play the parade, the pop parade the day yes, before? Yes, we played, we played up and down the parades. We, we I remember that. Three or yeah. four flatbed trucks going up Fifth Avenue yeah. to the United Nations. We do a start at Washington uh, Square, Square Park. Park. Yeah. And uh, that's all good. Is Bleaker Bob still there? No, he's long gone. Long gone. He's long he was gone. a character. Oh, he was, man. He, and it was he, Dave's rat cage, too. Yeah, well, that's going that's going way back, right? That's that's way back. Uh, so so uh, just just as we're sort of ABC roll- No Rio played there many times. You know, it wasn't you know it, it was more of the political, and there was a real split with politics and political. Yeah. And I understand it, and I was always in the political world, but I'm glad it, it all got over with. Hey, what's going on here? 1982 in in Berlin, we met up with members of of uh, Nina Hagen's band. We were staying at the same wow uh, hostel. Now that the guy with the red hair, Paul, played drums with Nina Hagen. Yeah. Uh, the woman on the left was a background singer. That's that's Al in the middle. Uh, that was a girl named Jenny right there in the middle of the blonde hair. She was just this Berlin character. She lives in London now. That's Auschwitz up next to me. Al Schmitz. I love it. Al Schmitz. Over my head. (laughs) And that's me right there in the middle. I'm not sure who the guy in the black green coat is. That's Berlin. That was exciting days. We we went on a 19-day tour to Germany and uh, UK uh, in Europe with with the Dead Kennedys. It was an incredible opportunity that really... Broke us that? into that market first, and we hooked up with the squatters and just different communities there and developed into punk rock. And, you know, we, we built this network, you know, where you could play in Fry, in Freiburg and Heidelberg and Mannheim and Frankfurt and Cone. And, you know, and there's 50, 60 gigs, in, you know, in that part of Europe between, you know, Belgium, Holland, Germany. And Poland's part of that. You know, they got a little Copenhagen and Denmark and Scandinavia. But it was really great. Hey, what was your, can you explain to us, like, what was your relationship with the Dead Kennedys? You know, Dead Kennedys, Biafra found our record along with Tim Yohannan and called me up in Austin, Texas, 1981, and said, baby, you're a rich man. You're a star. You know, blah, blah, blah. you deserve <laughs> to be brought up. You want to get signed to Tentacles label. Well, let's talk. Let's bring your band out. Blah, 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 blah. I go, can we bring our friend the Dicks out with us? We did. We went out there and played June. We played July 2nd, 1982. Our first tour, our tour was three gigs. Next weekend with, 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 uh, next weekend with Flipper. And the weekend after that with Black Flag and Costa Mesa, the show I was talking to you about. This is 1981. My head was spinning, just realizing all this stuff. I wanted to get married to these people. I was like, finally, someone who gets me, you know, mm-hmm. like it's so good when people, you know, you, 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 you're in a little scene like Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. and you're trying to, you know, get yourself to a position out, up and out. And all of a sudden maximum rock and roll, which was a radio station. Tim later on started the zine, put me on the first front cover. And, uh, I could share a picture of you later on. And we'll hopefully we'll do more of these shows, Drew. New hey, York Hardcore Chronicles Live. What a great <laughs> show. Support Drew. He's got an array of characters he plugs into. I like Long and let me tell you, 
Jersey Channel Islands. They're off the coast of England in the in the there's a show about an American girl who goes to Jersey Islands, falls in love with a horse, and there's nefarious shit going on. It's, it's a Netflix series. Hey, didn't didn't um did I mean, there was did, other questions you had. Why do you wear a fanny pack? You wear a fanny pack because you keep your money and your passport and your stuff real. Local show, you guys got all apartments in New York, great for you. Quite often now, it does look embarrassing. I let my merch person take. Do you care bring? Of it. Do you bring your I shit on merch stage? To store my do you, do you bring all your shit on stage? You lose your shit at gigs, and you can be paranoid about losing shit at gigs. You know. Like, Have you ever gotten shit swiped at gigs? Real or not, it affects you. And yeah. so you wear a fanny pack. Not a great fashion choice. His belly hanging out. He probably had something in that fanny pack. He was not ready to lose. Maybe yeah. his watch. Maybe his passport. Maybe. Eight hundred dollars, and yeah. and you you walk around in this life, and I've walked around in Europe, and you know and all these other. You got five seven thousand dollars in your pocket, right? You don't know when someone's going to come to you and go, "Hey, you, boom, put your hands up in the air, freeze." Anyway, so people wear fanny packs, and they they try to be self sufficient, have a sleeping bag, a fanny pack, become a world traveler. You know, we don't live in nice apartments or put shit all over the walls. We just have what we got. And I, that's part of me, my life, because right up until the pandemic, we were doing 120, 130 gigs a year. Wow. And I love it. We can do it. We play Japan. We play Indonesia. We play uh, Mexico. We play Brazil. We got America. You got Europe. You got Canada. There's a lot of places to go play. And hey. uh, you want to stay busy. In the last five, six years, I had a blood disease. I got very sick for a little while. I got better. I said, I want to go see the world and play everywhere. And we were done everywhere. Hey, John LaFada says, please make an MDC fanny pack. <laughs> we will. I, I, I was discussing with my merch person. People love to buy your shit. I'm going to be there with MDC grinders, pipes, fanny packs, sleeping bag, boxer shorts, panties. T-shirts, long sleeve, short sleeve, patches. You hey, know. let's talk. Let's talk about this record. Uh, uh, memories, recollections of making the record and the record. It was a really out. incredible experience. You know, there was no hardcore. We were just, you know, I didn't even know how good we sounded till we got into the studio. We went into studio with a guy named Dan Yaney in Houston. You know, drove three hours from Austin back in our rickety van. And we, we did three different sessions with him. And he just pl plugged in the sounds high on reverb. Yet it sounds like we're in a cave. And it's just so intense. No war. No KKK. No Patrick Jones say, Or, you know, corporate death burger. Or John Wayne was a Nazi. And it made it ring. Gaza X first mastered it. And it just shined. We, we, we recorded it in late 80, mid 81. Mixed it up. Finally got it to, like, show it around. Uh, we and, and we we took it out west and we played for the first thousand ourselves, sold them all the rough trade and this and that. Dutch East India, the old, the old, the old network, started our own R Radical Records. We got in bed with this guy named Tab Rex, who ended up ripping us off a few years later. But that album was beautiful. Carlos Lowry did the front cover, Buff Parrot did the clan cop in the back. This was my life, what I'm feeling the first 25 years. Being a musician, being a loudmouth, being a vegetarian, saying, you know, trying to speak truth to power. You know, oh, our military doesn't have to torture, you know, regular people in South America. That's the back of the album, half clan, half cop. We were in Texas at the time. The Ku Klux Klan were like killing farm worker people registering for Cesar Chavez. They tried to march here in Austin, 1980, end in 1981. We threw rocks at them, blah, 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 chased them away. They kept coming to our shows, handing out beers, you know, vying for the youth, you know. And all of a sudden, 82, everything exploded. And this was our first album. And we put all those songs. I'm very proud of them. I wrote every one of those songs. Business on Freight, Dead Cops, America So Straight, Born to Die, Corporate Death Burger, Violent Rednecks, I Remember John Wayne, Jig Friends. That was, that was our 15 or 16 songs. It was about 23-minute album, burst of adrenaline. And happy to say we've sold 200,000 copies of them. God bless you, everyone who bought one. You can buy it again from beercity.com. Go look them up. 
I'm very proud of it to this day. It's probably the album that gets me around the world. It is. It is iconic. You know, doing my homework for the show, I listened to your whole catalog and boy, that one really brought back a lot of yeah. memories. And, and this know. one, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> clones, Star Wars, you know, Star Wars, no, yeah. Star Wars. So yeah, you can give this to your, you know, I was wearing this and a cop pulled us over. We had a van with a trailer and we parked where we shouldn't be. And I was waiting for people to come back from the beach, California. I got out of the car and the cop looked at me and goes, oh, I love Star Wars. <laughs> he didn't know it was millions of dead clones, that it was based on my own thing. There's a part of me that, you know, as I go through this life, uh, not want to have a chip on my shoulder everywhere I go. Millions of Dead Cops was a risque name, let me tell you. Uh, you know, in 1982, 83, 84, traveling this country with little mohawks, you know, and John Wayne was in that, you know, you get fried. I got threatened by the police more than a few times. I, that's it, in my notes. I loved it at first, and then it grew, and then we had, you know, political differences with the East Coast scene, with the Tesco V touch and go scene. And, you know, and we were 2 2 for the, you know, for the New York hardcore types. We were just, you know, we were too, too ahead of our time is what we were. Hmm. They all came around. They're all vegetarians talking about LBGQ community love and all the stuff that's good. And, you know, I just, I just realized growing up, and I was telling you before, as a New Yorker with Italian, Jewish, and English in me, and then all those families not liking each other. And I was like, you're all full of beans. You know, I'm treating people like an outsider. You know, uh, I was a little Jew in the family, in my Italian family, you know, and they were all being priests and this and that, and they're Dominican, serious Catholics. But, uh, you know, biggest part is having love in your heart for yeah. human beings and for the nuances and the individualities of human beings. Hey, you know, hey our, our good friend. Sometimes I am a humanist and I'm a New Yorker humanist, and sometimes it was too much for my New York brethren. They're catching up, and I love them. Harley, John Joseph, Vinny Stigma, you know, Booby. I love Booby. Love Booby. Booby's beautiful. Robbie Crib Crash, you know him. Chris Sharuki passed. Oh, you know what I wanted to ask you? You just reminded me. I love me. Chris Sharuki. I have his sweatshirt. I hung out with Chris. I, I know the people from the Dead family he was involved with. Yeah. And it's a sad, sad that, he, right. that he passed. I love Chris Sharuki. We see each other once a year for the longest time. I got a question for you. Uh, you just reminded me when you mentioned uh, Shiruki, who 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 I was friends with. Um, when you when you when when MDC relocated to San Francisco, you guys lived at the Vats, right? That's right. Tell there us about tell, beer us, tell, us, tell us about it, what the Vats was. Were. Tall, and it had all these beer vats, you know. So it had about 10, 12 beer vats on every floor of this big warehouse. Up to four floors, and then they had the starter vats on top where they first mix it and dropped it into the vat below. And they had this whole tunneling system, and we lived in it. And it was, you know, it was a really very cool place to just, you know, come out to San Francisco, get food stamps, and just, you know, camp out every night, have a sleeping bag. And, and we, we, we worked for the place, so they gave us a room, and we had built a door to it. But it was a cool place. And there was bathroom and shower at the end of the hall. Who and else it, lived you know, there? Not too much for some people. Who else lived there? Uh, you know, uh, DRI lived there. Everyone stayed there. Uh, minor threat stayed there. They couldn't believe it, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I took them to eat. I promised them a meal because they cooked me a meal. And I promised them a meal. I took them to a soup kitchen. <laughs> wow. uh, Back in the day, they were incredible. They rocked San Francisco. Yeah, they were great. And the whole California. We played the old Alpine Bill show with them. And that was like one of these great shows in L.A. that went on and, and, uh, with MDC and, and, uh, and Minor Threat. And everywhere they go, they have a great show. And we played with Pugazi. And we played with them with Scream at the Wilson Center in D.C. If you remember that? And we went on sure. to play St. Stevens in, in D.C., we never played the 930 Club, uh, and it's hard to play D.C. these days. We yes. play Church Falls or Falls, or Falls Church or something like you that. You play the Auto Bar, though, right? Uh, the Auto Bar in Baltimore. We, we're playing with them with GBH like on you know May 9th or 10th or something like that. Yeah, people we're are playing, asking. Uh, New York. We're playing Amityville. 
We're playing the Gramercy Theater on uh, the 7th, I believe. And yeah, no, the Amityville is Amityville's the 6th. Amityville's the 6th. The Gramercy's the 7th. All right. Gramercy's the 7th. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember the Gramercy if I've been there or not. You know? It's, an old, shows it's an old it's an old movie theater on 23rd Street. Uh, as a kid growing up in New York, I, I saw movies there. I remember I saw Psycho 2 there. You know, it's cool. got a, it, it had about – it's an old movie theater. That, that is way cool. It kind of reminds me of the Beacon Theater. Yeah, yeah. We played, we played the Beacon. I saw Johnny Thunders at the Beacon Theater. Ooh. I was just – I was in New York City. And, uh, of course, my, my parents were out on Long Island. So, you know, I go visit them for a couple of days and go, oh, I'm going to go in the city and find out what's going on. Wow, Johnny Thunders at, at the Beacon Theater. And I saw him there. He, he died a couple played, of years later. You played the beat. You played the beacon with the dead Kennedys, right? Yes, we did. Yeah, with I remember the, that. With the false prophets. Oh yeah! Wow. Stefan. That's a band. That's a band that's sort of been lost to the shifting sands. They were a really great band. We played with them yeah. in Europe. We went to yeah. Sweden with them. We had some history. We we're in the same thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, we like Stefan a couple yeah, times. Yeah. We're, you know, we're both going to Scandinavia. Why don't we play gigs together instead of playing them apart? Yeah, you know, yeah. usually it's tough because bands need to make their own four, five, six hundred a show and then hopefully sell a bunch of shirts and, you know, make a thousand a night, you know. Yeah. But sort of other times it's like, let's just let's just split the money and just have a good time together and succeed or, or fail together. And uh, hey, let me take uh, let me take a sponsor break and we'll come back in a couple of minutes and we'll talk about uh, MDC and let's talk about Moby's movie that movie that you're in as well. OK. All right. I'm running out of steam and blah, blah, blah. You know, so you're, you're, we're, we're, we're good. You catch your breath. I'll be back. You'll be back in a couple right, of minutes. Right, give me right? two minutes. Jim. I'm a, you got I'm a, it. I'll see you in a couple. Fix yourself some tea. Clean and sober. Straight edge. That's right. I'll see you. Woo. As Ric Flair would say, woo. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. Yes, it is. I knew it was going to be a banger. Abso friggin' lootly. You know? Hey, let's talk about some upcoming shows. This Wednesday, speaking of DC, Skeeter from Scream will be on the show this Wednesday. We will also have our Women of the Pit Spotlight coming up this Wednesday. Uh, a week from Wednesday, filmmaker Danny Garcia talking about Johnny Thunders. He directed the Looking for Johnny film. He has a new film out, uh, The Birth of Punk Rock in New York City. Sunday, March 12th, the show before the epic 250th episode, Louis Beto from Carnivore and Agnostic Front. And then episode 250, Lars from Rancid will be our guest. Episode 251, what can I tell you? Hail Satan, Tony Abaddon Bray will be on the show. Wednesday, March 29th, once again, DC represent with the Slicky Boys. We just rescheduled Phil Demo from, for April 5th. And this was just announced the other day. Senor Pistachio from H2O is coming on the show. Also, a couple other events going on at the Bowery Electric uh, a, a week from today. There is no, there is no show a week from today because we will be down at the Bowery Electric for two-man advantage, Enziguri, non-residents, fuck it, I quit, and Iconicide. Uh, after that, Saturday, March 11th, at Generation Records, it is Paris Mayhew's Rise of the Agros listening and signing event. Come on down. He's signing records. I will be moderating, asking him some questions. A week or two later, it is the Women of the Pit Stronger Together compilation that they are putting out. It is a listening party at Generation Records with a live performance by Ma'afa. So come on down. That is Saturday, March 25th. Support the entities that support you. Sunday, April 2nd, Channel 3 will be in New York City playing a free show with Incendiary Device. It's going to jump off tonight. War Orphan featuring ex Sick of It All, Richie Sip, Slashers, and Regicide. Um... Sunday, April 30th, uh, back at the Bowery Electric. It's free with Go, Crazy Eddie, Down Low, Crippled Urn, and Chum Huffer. Then the Rampage Fest is going down Sunday, May 21st. Reaching out, Cropsy, Extinguish the Code, Pink Mist, Sewage, Raid, and Last Breath. And then May 27th, in our beloved Tompkins Square Park, Leeway, Rebelmatic, Butterbrain, Winterwolf, 
Scott Helen's Army of One. And we just announced this the other day. Come on down to my free birthday bash at the Bowery Electric. It's me and Steve Zing from Danzig and Sam Hain. We share, we share a birthday. Uh, he's dusting off his band Morning Noise. They're playing their first New York City show in 35 years. I'm dusting off the high and the mighty. That's right. One life all in with our pal Don Foos, Concrete Ties, and Chemical X. Lots going on. It's going, it's going down. Get your ass to New York. Uh, let's take a, here's a little word from our sponsors, and we're going to come right back with Dave. From Since 1992, Generation Records has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues, soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as t-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections and music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com and follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Hey, guys, Vlad from Organic Grill. As you can see, we're in a new location on West 3rd Street, right by Blue Note and Comedy Cell. The place is bigger, kitchen is bigger, we have more varieties, more food. We are looking forward to treat you guys with great dishes. All Hardcore Chronicles, welcome to, to Organic Grill. We are going to serve all the events as we usually do. And we are happy to see you guys. Peace, what it do? Welcome to NYT Comics at 117 Main Street, Dobbs, Surrey, New York. I'm Debo the Pro with my homie. Lee Farley. Welcome to the spot. Specializing in yesterday's and today's comic books, rare CGCs, toys, collectibles. Got skateboards, old school tapes, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer. Video games, original art, original art pieces by your favorite New York City and worldwide artists. Let's go. Skate decks all day, baby. We also have the young reader section here for like 10, 10 and under. Uh, the pops. People love the pops. Star Wars. <laughs> We are New York Hardcore. We always rep the scene. Let's get it off. And we're back. The one, the only New York Hardcore Chronicles live. Yeah, our guest today is Dave Dictor from MDC. And we're having a good time. And I hope you are as well. Uh, I want to mention, listen, man. What can I say? Support the show. You ever hear that one before? Support the show that supports you. Uh, there's a Patreon page. There's a PayPal address. Uh, there's a there's a, su a super chat feature. Uh, if you do a super chat with a question, it comes through in color. I can't miss it. We're gonna take questions uh, the last in the last uh, 20 minutes of the show. But please support this show. That's why I have enabled, been enabled. You have enabled me to do this show. Uh, for the past, uh, we got, we're coming up on three years and I want to shout out a couple of the latest patrons, Stefan Sonic, Jeff Steiner and Brendan Murray, please. The best way to support this fucking show is fucking Patreon. So please, 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 please support the show. Uh, <laughs> millions of dead chronicles. Absolutely. Um, you know, that said, yes, support. And also listen, if you're watching the show for the first time, and you think it might be the only time, uh, do a super chat for a couple bucks or, or, or uh, make a contribution to PayPal, man. Support the show. This show supports you. Uh, that said, let's bring our, desk, uh, our guest back on, Mr. Dave Victor. Hey, bro, when you, come, when you come back to New York, we're fucking going to Organic Grill, dude. I tell you, that looks very good. The food yes. looks excellent. Yeah. Uh, I look forward to that. Uh, yeah. When I was in Manhattan, when I would play the uh, Bowery Ballroom, we walked around. There was so much good food. I was like, wow, this is great. Yeah. And uh, yeah, be vegan. Yeah. Eat, eat, eat right. Take care Before of your health. Take care of your health. It's the most important thing. You know, I'm 67 years old. I don't know how old you are, Drew, but I'm, I'm just learning to take better and better care of myself. 
And when you get older, you, 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 you know, know that, that I got friends who are sick and friends who are not well. And, you know, a piano can fall on our heads any time. But taking yeah. care of yourself, don't over drink. Don't hey, that, drink that's that's it. This, you know, this day with fentanyl, man. And I'm in I'm math and people are like, oh, Dave, you like Coke? I go, sure, man. I'm, you know, but I can't do any with you. And and I've come close. And then, you know, and then later on, I hear some guy died of fentanyl. And like, wow, you know, because you got to be know, on you your know toes what, you, know what, Dave, you know what, Dave? Those days are over for you and me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We've done our share. Nah. We, we've done more than our share. And, uh, but yeah, as I move into being 67 years old, you know, I, I want to be around another 20 years. I want to, I want to be doing something, playing, playing music, playing folk, reading book. I'm going to go back to school. I love history. I love ancient history. I like all these different things. I like Sumerian culture, the first written language. There's so much in this life to be, you know, filled with life. And, you know, at a certain point, the party can just, you know, go on without you. And yep. it, it's for kids. Hey, tell us, like tell, us a little, kids. tell us a little bit about this. This is another. In 1983, after the first album came out, big deal. Uh, Jerry A mixed the music. It was recorded in New York City. I can't tell you where, which was where the bad high rise, high rise studio, high rise studios. And at the same time, we had met Crass over in England because uh, Steve Ignorant and Phil Free came to our show in London where we played with the subhumans and the dead Kennedys. And uh, we went out to the Crass farm, really heady for us. Like, oh, and they had a record label. And we said, we want to be on Crass Records. And they're like, oh, we don't do American bands, but they put this record out. And it's got that crass circle in the multi death. If for those yeah, did, was, did, out there, the they, one that's got the circle on it is the crass. Didn't they mention that we want to put your record out, but the millions of dead cops thing is a bit much for us? Yeah, you know, uh, I was talking to Penny heart to heart, and you know, he was 10, 15 years older than me, and, and I'm like a earnest 23, 24. You know, I look up to you so much, Penny. And he goes, you know, he goes, you know, you, the anger in your thing that you're singing could cause people to go to kill a cop, and that'll be on you. And, 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 and you know, and I thought about it, and he was like my hero, you know. Yeah. He, was, he was like old father time hero, you know, where Black Flag and Circle Jerks and TKs sure. were more contemporaries, mm. you know. Uh, you know, and like, you know, Minor Threat and FCG Control were peers, you know, and contemporaries, you know, but, but, you know, Crass and Penny it really took it to heart. So I said, all right, let's come back. Let's make the MDC. We'll make a different MDC all the time. And hence multi-death corporation. And let me tell you, that shirt has sold a lot for me through the years. <laughs> Thank you for everyone who bought it. You can get it at my MDC Wix.com page, uh, uh, Facebook. We got an MDC page, but it's, it's, it's by Vince Rancid. He painted it in 1983 for us. It was the cover of this record. It's the skull tank churning up the people. And I did a lot of research in the middle. Let's talk about El Salvador, Nicaragua, what's going on in Central America at the time. The United States had trained all these Green Berets, and they were trying to keep down, you know, uh, people's movements. And a lot of times they were protecting, you know, uh, United Fruit and... Yeah, you know, right. And right. and Del Monte and doing it very, very unfairly. It was the end of American hegemony and outright corporate abuse. And, I saw, uh, I, and that and this record talked about it. And I tried to, you know, to wake kids up and say, it's not just lollipop America. America does stuff that sometimes hurts people. We do a lot of good stuff. We yeah. feed people, we support the United Nations, you know. And I, I'll take that into into control. But there's, you know, to these poor people in El Salvador who are getting churned up by the Green Beret thing, and they're trying to do a little protest for better wages. And these Green Berets, they killed Oscar Romero, who was an, uh, a, a Catholic archbishop in El Salvador, and they murdered the nuns. We wrote a song called Death of a Nun. And that, to me, that's part of what the punk rock was always was. I was writing songs like Dick for Brains and My Family's a Little Weird. And I work, I and, uh, I, you know, but, and, and other times I got really serious. And uh, and we wrote the song Chicken Squawkers on the Moby movie. 
They made me into the hero on that Moby, Moby Vegan Punk Rock movie. I am right in the middle of it. And I, I got put, I'm in the grandfather chair. You know, like Ray Capo and members of Youth of Today and, you know, John Joseph and just names were dropped. And I was like placed in like, you know, I guess I became a vegetarian. I was sitting around with my mom in 1974, 75, and I wanted to become a vegetarian. And she said, write me a song. And I wrote the song Chicken Squawk. It had nothing to do with punk rock. It was me and my mother. And my mother ended up buying me a guitar right after that. And she's like, God, I want you to be an artist. And I had a sweet mama who took me to plays on Broadway. Oh, I love going to plays on Broadway. I'm coming there with, with my girlfriend and her 10-year-old. And we're going to go see uh, Wicked. And oh, we good. Might go see, we might go see Hamilton, too. Hamilton's, Hamilton's still a tough ticket, man. But Wicked, yeah. Wicked, Wicked, Wicked. Yeah, they're both expensive. It. I was looking at the prices. You know, it goes... Oh. You know, one thirty six for a nosebleed seat. And if you yeah. want anything kind of good, it's one eighty six. Or yeah, you know, yeah. I yeah. mean, you know, the first three rows, or you know, the balcony right above. But it's an experience, you know. Like I, I go you, back. I, I saw Amadeus on Broadway. Oh. I've seen about twenty Broadway plays. My mom took me to Fiddler on the Roof. You know, I couldn't believe it. My mom tried to turn me into Barbara Streisand, gay guy. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she took me to all these plays and da da da. Hey, I want. I want to. Good. New York City, so beautiful. I, just before we start talking about this film, I want to say, if you come in with your gal and the kid, if you have any time at all, I'd love to see it. Walk around Central Park. Well, I, I'll I'll do a little walking tour with you. History of Central I, I Park. Love that very much. We're all yeah. coming over. We're all going to crawl Drew Stone and come over there. Make that right <laughs> around Thompson Square, June. 9, 10th, 11th, yeah. because we're playing Thompson Square Park. We played Thompson Square Park about six, seven, eight times. I we remember, yeah. We played four or five times. We played yeah. everywhere in New York City. Remember the Knitting Factory? Of course. Of we course. played there with Subhumans. And yeah, yeah. Uh, and then where else was it? Oh, there was the the Backlands or the Wetlands. Wetlands. Wetland. Oh, gosh. Wow. Right, yeah. there, right near the tunnel entrance over there going to Jersey. Yeah, it's like a like a like a real sort of a jam band type of place. Great yeah. Dead, you know. Hey, Long you, Island, you know, for all my Long Island roots, I've only played Long Island, but maybe ten times. Hmm, hmm. We played hey, at Martin Legion headquarters in Glen Cove, though. Someone set that up. Hey, I want I want to talk a little bit about this film, and I want to say to everybody, uh, this film here I just watched. It's called the Punk Rock Vegan Movie, and uh, it uh, Moby directed it. And it is on YouTube. He directed it. He directed it, and he released it on YouTube for free. And as a filmmaker, uh, I must say that I enjoyed it very much. Uh, it was very good. It was very well done. Uh, the first third of it is like a really great punk and hardcore documentary. It's yeah. really it's it's, today. Ray Capo, yeah. his band. Uh, I think there's Vegan Reich in there. Yeah. Uh, it had that, you know, New York East Coast, Connecticut influence. And I remember yeah. the Connecticut scene, the, uh, yeah. the, the Anthrax. There, North the Anthrax. Anthrax. Yep. Really cool. Yeah. I, I like New Haven. Is New Haven still going on? That Toads? Yeah, the one that's right near the train station. Toads, I think. Talk about Toads? We'll talk yeah. about number nine. I'm not sure. But, but nine, listen, New Haven. anybody out there, listen. Uh, uh, whether you're vegan or not, and I'm not, I'm not pushing a vegan agenda on you. What I'm saying is this is a well-crafted film. This is a good film. Uh, there's a lot of punk and hardcore history in it. Uh, I enjoyed it very, very much. How did you yeah. get involved with this, Dave? Uh, actually, uh, Moby contacted a guy that was doing our booking on the West Coast, Covert Booking, and uh, said he wanted to talk to me. And he took me out to lunch and just said, um, you you were a big influence. You were like one of the first people who were talking, you know, don't eat don't eat meat, and you know, and, and saying talking about it on stage, 81, 82, 83, 84. And you you helped blossom a whole generation. And uh, I like you like to use your song Chicken Squawk. I like to give you some money, film you talking about it, and that's what came out of it. I was in LA. Uh, I was on the middle of tour, and we, we did that that interview you see me on in the film in a park it's lot. But it's, it's just great. a great film. It, the, the, it does it doesn't pontificate too much. 
you know, you know, it doesn't say, it oh, doesn't. Be vegan, blah, blah. it just yeah. talks about his passion, his thing. He does it comically. He's got this little dog, he does. He like does. his sidekick in the whole thing. He's Very like sitting, at, sitting with you at a lawn chair at the pool, yeah, or, yeah. watching the big screen. Just, you know, talk about punk rock. If you're a Ray Capo, you've been today, fam. Um, big shout out to Ray. I yep. wonder where he is right now. I have not seen him in 30 years. But we played together. We played in San Francisco at the farm, did a few things together. Uh, I love those guys. And, yeah. uh, and you know, I, you know, you know, I, I watched the film. There are nine. Actually, you make 10. There are now 10 people that are in that film that have been on this show. Ten. That's great. I know John Joseph is on there. I know HR is on there. John uh, and, and Derek Green. Derek Green from Sepultura. Too. Yeah. yeah, Ray Capo's in there. Right? They got Sepultura in there. They got yep. they got Steve of uh, Steve Ingram of the Crass and yep. his projects. He's, he's great. great Steve, Steve, Ingram. Ingram, Steve Ingram is great in the film. He's great. he is great, and he's a great guy. I, I see him at shows. I haven't had a real intimate talk with him, but I know he knows yeah. that we're out there. We played a lot with the Subhumans. Uh, D Dick Lucas, wonderful, wonderful person. They're famous. They're great. Go ahead, check them out. Napalm Somebody, Death was famous and great, man. I just played with them, 16 gigs. They rock. Yeah, Napalm they Death. Rock. Yeah, Napalm Death is, is, is hard. Um, I'm looking for somebody asked. Oh, I, I I have I have photos. Let me show the photos first. Martyr Artist says, Dave, Elvis. Hold on. I got the Elvis picture. Yeah. Hold on. Elvis. I have the actual two pictures for this. For people that were living through hardcore yeah. in the 80s. Elvis? Here you go. Yeah, well, well, there was, I, was, I was channeling or, different great people yeah. and just trying to channel their spirits. And Elvis died somewhere there in the late 70s. And so Divine died in the mid 80s. And you'll show the picture. Or, of me or, or Divine. And I was doing shows Divine. for a whole tour. One was the Mourn Divine correctly. And I did the Dead Cops Rock tour, and where I, I sing. Uh, I'd sing, I'd do an Elvis medley at the end. And it was, I was. Did you dress up like this every night? 83, 85. Everyone was going for something different. Everyone was changing. Hardcore was split. It was really kind of as in the American, as the New York hardcore book said, to a certain degree, hardcore broke up. Circle Jerks broke up. The yeah, Black Flag broke up. Minor Threat broke up. Bad Brains kind of broke up. A lot of people broke up the end of the 80s. Look it up. People, it became a lot of core and bad religion and no effects and Green Day and Rancid, you know, Op Ivy Rancid in that period from 88 to 92. And um, anyway, I, you know, I, I just talking. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it, it, I'm, it, it, you it, know, it, hardcore it, went through a lot of changes and I, I started doing drag and costume and I am, I am all of that. I am all that, you know, uh, I am a, I have a fluid, I am a fluid human being and I can, did, tap, I can tap into all, all kinds of different realities. Why and did all um, say is play safe? Why, why did MBC? And you got nobody to worry about, but yourself. Don't worry about nobody else. Everyone, you know, you know, here's the great oh, picture to go with that, that too. You know, he, he shouldn't dress like Elvis or Divine. Here I am, vegan. This is me about 10 years ago. I was looking prettier and younger. And uh, there's my tattoos. And I love you. That's my big embrace to the world. That's great. I, I, love, I love that picture. Why did MDC take a break in 95? Why did you go on hiatus for, it was like five no, years. No, to be quite honest, uh, I got involved with drugs in a bad way. And mm. uh, I, I came to one of those crossroads in my life where, you know, San Francisco and the changing of the scene and everything, doing everything. I was getting into my, I, after juggling my addictions wonderfully through the 80s, found by the early mid 90s, all of a sudden I was victim to them. And I was under the spell of methamphetamine, of white powders. I was, you know, I was going on all these tours, living in bars, you know, there's something you can get numb and it can happen to you. 
where you start doing a line, a line before you go on, you start getting jaded, you're tired, you don't feel like touring, you do another line, get back in the bus, go another 300 kilometers, you know, and play all these things out. I got kind of personally numb, you know, in my own life. My, my relationship with my lover had broke up, uh, who was the mother of my child. And I was just kind of lost, you know, living in bars in a hardcore band where everyone wants to hand you drugs or liquor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was too much. And it was time for me to just chill out. And between 95 and 99, 2000, I, uh, I chilled out. I, actually, I was in the middle of it all. And I did this uh, album called The Submissives with uh, Tom Pig who is uh, a poison idea, what a, one of the great, great yeah. people in the world. Yeah. Uh, Tom Roberts of, yeah, yeah. Uh, of uh, Poison Idea. Yeah. You know, big, to me, big uh, champ big champion. one of the greatest things. And we did an album together. And he just would buy 10 albums, and he just gotten all this Crow money because Pantera played a, a, a Poison Idea song, and the Crow sold like 700 million copies. Jer and, Jerry, uh, a, Jerry A was on Jerry the show when he told somebody, us that. Yeah, Jerry, you might have Jerry A come on the show. He's great been on guy. the show. He's already Tom been on Pattis, the show. One of those beautiful people. Great creative soul. You know, I, I was clean from drugs. And I got back with Tom and I got on drugs. Just like so I created an album with him. But he was so crazy and so beautiful. And so, it could almost killed me. And yeah. then I probably, you know, lost my teeth earlier than I should have. And it was stupid. But eventually I had to get away from that. And I went to New York and I got completely clean and sober. You know, Dave, I got to say, man, I, I, I love your I love your honesty, bro. You put it you put your cards right on the table. I, it's really refreshing. Yeah, man. I am I who I am. I, you know, I was just you talking know? to my girlfriend. She goes, you don't strategize right. You just come from the heart and say whatever's in your mouth. I go, that's how I've gotten by this whole time. You yeah. can't you can't fake it. I'm truly yeah. this excitable, loving, giving, but aware of animals, animal abuse. You know, where my government spends its money, what's going on. What is too woke? What is not enough woke? What is really, you know, the Proud Boys? What is, you know, really mm -hmm. Antifa? You know, and, 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 you know, and I lean towards Antifa, but I don't prove everything to do. But I know the Proud Boys just rude as fuck. And all those guys, I met all those Ottawa skinheads way back when. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just going to speak truth to power. I'm a humanist. I'm a vegetarian. Uh, and I love the people I love. I don't try to put any straight category. I love Harley Flanagan. We played together. I love Harley Flanagan. And I know some of his sins. I freaking love him. Love him. Love him. You know, we go way back. We hung out in the streets in 1980. Uh, the SF Skins came to my sandwich bar. And I fed them sandwiches. And it, it got me by with the SF Skins. But, you know, later on, I didn't realize what I was doing. But they went all crazy and got white Aryan resistance and this and that. And became bad boys. But I was always this cherished Hindu cow. You know, I could do no wrong, and you're the guy that fucking fed me, so I'm never going to let anyone hurt you. You know, so I had this cross thing going on. I lay agnostic front, but they got it very apolitical, and the whole Roger, and then the New York scene kind of pushed me away, kind of. I didn't, you know, it, it just, you know, late 80s, I wasn't part of that thing. But I didn't, I just didn't go into the belly of the beast. I just kind of like, we didn't play New York so much. And when mm. I did, I played Tim Pan Alley, and I would do Divine Drag and just piss off everybody. And, and then, then play like, and, 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 and then play ABC No Rio, which you know, which is the more political place. That is in 1985. That is the lineup there. That's uh, that's uh, uh, going from uh, no, it's 2005. That's, 2005. Al, that's Al Schultz with his hat, the original drummer. That's Mikey Donaldson. That's Ron Poser. That's me and that's Gabby of Molotov Cocktail, CBGB's 2004 5. Yeah. That was great. That was a good time in life. I got Let clean. Let me ask you who put together who, the old lineup and, you know, uh, you know, let me just say, you know, alcohol, boy, you can drink too much of it. And, and if you get with drugs with alcohol, it can kill you. And, who you is know, this? Who is you this? Don't want to go that Who's this? That, that, that's Kieran and Plunkett of the Restarts. Soul Brother. We played Indonesia. We played England together. We played all these Rebellion Fests together. We went to Indonesia together. He's like my kid brother. I love him. 
Good. You know, like, you know, like five or eight best friends in punk rock. He is one of them. And I'm blessed because we've gotten to meet so many great connections in this life. And I'm blessed to meet you, Drew Stone. Really am. And I say that because I'm sincere, you know, about what I want to be. That's the cool, cool about New York is no bullshit. This is 1983, 84, uh, L.A. outside of a, a gig. I think we were doing a flip side interview and we just got there early. And someone said, let me take a picture, you guys. That's Al Schultz with his arms crossed. That's me, Franco and Ron Posner. And that was, you know, that was early road MDC. And that was what went on with Rock Against Reagan, 83, 84, that lineup. That's the, that's sort of the classic, that's the classic lineup. Yeah. What, Mike what? Donaldson wrote, was on the album, did a lot of the music, but he had other music projects. He was in the Offenders. And uh, is that right? Olympic Auditorium is that? Yeah, Samuel? yeah, yeah. He's not on that show. That's that's Franco, right. but but uh, you know, Mikey went to uh, San Francisco with us and played with us uh, mm -hmm. other places. Did uh, when when you do when you do the acoustic thing, like what's what's the repertoire? You know, uh, I, I generally I start off by talking about my mother and Chicken Squawk. And how I started playing acoustic guitar, I was watching Alice. My mom took me to see Alice's restaurant. You know, I wasn't blind. I was living in New York, seeing what's going on in the village. You know, I went to Washington Square Park when I was like 12 or 13. All these hippies hanging out. It was just so cool. And all I needed to do was get an acoustic guitar. And I had some friends in Glen Cove. And uh, you showed that picture before to me uh, where we're all camping out together. And that was the Covers. And we, we became uh, we became stack of bone. We became uh, the, the solar pigs. And we first did right. it was like 77, right? 76, 77. And uh, and I just knew I loved music. And I was just very lucky to have New York and a supportive mom. And everything just kind of left me alone. And I finally, you know, did the Rocky Mountain High, went out to went out to the Rockies, West Shelton, Montana, and Boulder, and just kind of like, you know, just hanging out until winter came, and I floated down to Austin, Texas. Here it is again. And I had gone to school in Boston. That's that's the one where we're in some hotel you know, on the way or in Montana, I forget. And, uh, and I, it was a great experience. I was 17, 18 years old, got finished with high school. Three or four of us went out in a car, and we all became bus boys at a Best Western and lived in a log cabin, said, I'm going to write some good songs. And uh, I got some songs out of it. You know, it's, it's kind of where my family was a little weird came out of. And uh, I, where I ate work came after that, but it was, I was on that trajectory uh, hmm. of writing these choppy songs that were easy to convert into hardcore. <laughs> I, I, know, I know we're jumping around here. We're going to take a, a quick break and then we're going to take questions from around the world for a couple of minutes. But this. All right. This, and, uh, you know, and jump around as much as you want. I am, okay. I am capable to jump from 80 I, I, I get it, bro. And this great. one, this one caught my eye because we just played here in the Boston over ballroom. Uh, this just happened, right? Yes. This, this was a great show on New Year's Eve. Played, it was sold out, it was 800 people or something like that. You know that big club, it's on the second floor. It's, I love that Bill place, Gallagher man. runs it, he's a good friend. He Great ran place. a small club called the, the Red Room. And we were like, you know, one of the, oh, someone canceled, could MDC come down? And we like, well, we're at practice. You know, he goes, great, I'll throw you $300, play a set, blah, blah, blah. You know, people expect something. And we come down and we played his Red Room. And he looks out for us and throws us these shows. You know, fearing these bands are making 15, 18, 20,000. We're getting like a thousand at that show, but we're really happy for it. We're in a tier below. We're not in that same category as Descendants or, you know, just to give you the, the rock and roll inside baseball that it is. And I'm not complaining. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad to the level we are, like in that making a thousand a night and with t shirts and merch are selling another thousand, two thousand. So, yeah, I can pay everyone a buck fifty a day and go home and you know stay in hotels. Yeah. Sell some merch. Sell a couple shirts. God bless the merch. God yeah, bless God the bless, merch. And God that is found at wix.com/slash <laughs> MDC Punk Official. Hey, I want to shout out. I want to shout out our good friend Marla. 
Uh, I saw her when we played uh, out in, in Portland. She says uh, she was there. Portland represent. I, I, I want to ask you. Portland's uh, a great town. I'm living in Austin. That's, a, that's what I want to ask you. So my me. house is there and my band is there. And I'm, I'm not going back right away. I just got off tour. We got COVID at the end of the tour. I didn't get COVID. I've had all four of my shots. Plus, I had COVID twice. But I was around everyone all sick. We lived through it. They came home. And uh, and life is beautiful. Life yeah. is beautiful. Be your inside beautiful. Love yourself the most. That's, you know, you are the most important person. Just love yourself. Do it. You know, Sat Chit Ananda. Meditation, devotion, and consciousness. That's where I'm growing towards. I'm going to have a meditation album. Here's my support animal liberation t-shirt. Hard to get one of those. Uh, this, this picture is like four or five years ago. I was, I love that shirt. I'm not exactly sure where it was, but uh, I wouldn't take that shirt off for the longest time. Hey, my girlfriend, my girlfriend just texted me and said he has an Edgar Allan Poe on his wall. Yes, we're big fans of Edgar Allan Poe. Actually, that was drawn by my uh, bassist. Uh, and I'm a fan of Edgar Allan Poe. There's a movie called uh, Pale Blue Eyes. I just oh, watched it. Was it. In a dream. I just watched it. And and uh, we went been to the Poe House there in Baltimore when you have a few spare moments besides going to the Auto Bar or, uh, or the Cross Bar or the what is that? There's a place in in Baltimore that uh, is like a lawyer bar, but it's also a hardcore bar on weekend nights. Yeah. What's that called? Pale Blue Eyes. Is that what it's called? What's up? Pale Blue Eyes. What's that? that oh, that's a movie that's on Netflix. I just watched uh, it. That's got, I just watched uh, it. Yeah. It's got Mr. Kale in it, and he play and he yeah. plays opposite yeah. uh, Edgar Allan Poe. And Edgar Allan Poe, I'm not sure if it's true or not, goes to this military academy, and there's yeah. this murder drama, inside stuff, and bad stuff. And it's I recommend that movie. It's it's you know it's it's it's, it's cool. slow. It's slow. Christian moving. Bale is pretty it's cool. It's a little slow moving until the last. It is last. slow moving. I, I had to watch it in two or three parts. Actually. Me too. Me too. But uh, yeah, that's okay. Not everything's meant to be consumed like chocolate pudding, you know, by the gallon. <laughs> you know, you're allowed to just taste something, watch it. I like period pieces. I like, yeah. you know, to, to imagine what it's like in a military school in 1830. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was I have an American Studies well, major from the University of Texas. Plan to go back and get my master's. I got my master's and my PhD in life, and I'm going to turn it into something I can, I can just do panels and and, and communicate to people and share right. the love. Sure, the love. Hey, let me uh, uh, let me take my you deserve. Let me take my last. Let me take my last sponsor break. It, it's it's a quick one, and we'll come back and we'll take questions from around. I the want world. you to sponsor and be alive and support New York Hardcore Chronicles Live and True Stone. It's the real deal, bringing you me unadulterated, no agenda except friendship and love and culture, art, music, expression, and that's what that's what we're that's what it's all about. I'll see you in a minute. June 11th at Thompson Square Park. See you in a minute. <laughs> Woo! God damn. You know, I'm, I'm a fortunate, lucky individual. I get to host a show like this with really, really fantastic artists uh, like our guest today and great people like you watching the show. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, the Texas Silver Rush DTFM Vinyl Distro, 126 Hardcore Clothing, and Upstate Records. Upstate Records is a New York-based DIY independent metal and hardcore label formed in 2017. They broke into the metal scene with their inaugural 26-band compilation in 2018, and since then have churned out over 80 releases in their brief five-year history with such notable artists as Leeway NYC, Sub-Zero, Brick by Brick, as part of their roster. Upstate Records maintains a focus on upcoming artists as well, with such artists as These Streets, Kind Eyes, Bovis, Life of Crime, and many more. In 2023, look for new releases by Mark Rizzo's new band, Revenge Beast, Call from Earth Crisis, Freya, Fury of Five, Angry Corpses, and a few more surprises in the works. Check them out at www.upstaterecordsnewyork.com. Also, I'm not going to forget this this time, Put in the code STONE10 and get 10% off any of your orders. So get your ass to New York Hardcore, uh, to, to Upstate Records, 10%. Just put in the code STONE10. 
Last but not least, our good friends Devin and DTFM Vinyl Distro looking for extreme music. DTFM Vinyl has got you. Located on 13th Street in lovely Fargo, North, Eric, North Dakota, we have the state's best selection of punk, hardcore, metal, ska, oi, and more. Can't make it in? Shop online from anywhere in the country at www.dtfmvinyldistro.com. DTFM Vinyl, where the policy still is and always will be death to false metal. That said, um, we covered a lot. Any questions you have for our guest, Dave Dictor from MDC, post your questions now. It's a free-for-all. Uh, shouting out, hey, one, more, one last time here. Listen, I know in a lot of ways I'm preaching to the converted, but hey, there's the Patreon page. There's a PayPal page right there. Uh, do do a, a super chat. Support this show. It's bananas. It's the New York hardcore banana. What was that Woody Allen film? You know, one, one false move. In, oh, that was uh, Blazing Saddles. <laughs> you know, they don't make them like that anymore. Uh, that said, um, let me let me see. My, my forget. I, I think I'm good. Just want to mention uh, real quick. A week from today, actually not a week from today. This Wednesday, Skeeter from Scream is on the show. So come on back this Wednesday. Uh, let's spirit, yo. I want to shout, yo. I want to shout out my girlfriend Rochelle in Astoria, Queens, baby. As soon as the show's over, I'm coming for you. Pardon the pun. Uh, that said, let's bring on Dave. What's up, buddy? Hey, man. I hey, just man. typing in hi, Skeeter. You know, blah blah. blah. <laughs> uh, I'm just. Uh, like the hardcore record store, I want to see that New York vegan grill. Sounds really incredible. Organic grill. Uh, your sponsors, people that are keeping you alive, keeping your momentum going, so important. Yeah, so I'm important very, to be that individual some, and that artist you are. And sometimes it comes, you need to self promote, and you just got to embrace it. And uh, and I'm, I'm happy you're out here doing it. I'm happy you reached out to me, sharing mm -hmm. pictures. I, I just really appreciate it. And I, I thank you all the people that ever saw me, want, bought a sticker from me, bought a record, bought anything. And coming to New York on uh, April 7th at Gramercy, I mean, May yep. 7th at Gramercy, and June 11th, free at Thompson Square Park. My heart just goes to all New York. I love you people. I love walking around the village. Let's do, let's do some questions. And let's start, let's, start, let's start with this. This is a good one. Any current bands you like? Oh, man, there's so many great bands I love. I got to say, you know, I saw Sham 69 at the, the Rebellion Fest, and they did uh, uh, The Kids United Will Never Be Divided. It was in a room with 5,000 people. You could feel the sweat. One of those things, you, there was so much sweat in the room. It was like causing optical illusions just looking out over it, and the room was pulsating. That was like a high moment for me. Mm. You know, not, not being said, I love all these new bands. I love Urban Waste. I love, I love, you know, not that they're so new, but, you know, there's someone in New York I'm dropping dropping a line on. I like Noogie and No Consent. I got a little label with, you know, with, with Grimace Records. And we got lots, we got 40 bands on our rosters. And uh, who else do I really like? I, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a large eclectic taste, you know. I, I like Pussy Riot. I like Pussy Riot. I don't care if they do techno music. I think they got they got real verve and nerve, and they're doing something really great. Uh, let me see who else who else do I really like these days? You know, I, I enjoy it all. You know, uh, wow! Whew. Didn't see that coming. Looks like Dave. Looks like Dave froze. Woo, man. Yeah. Wow. Whew. Boy, I'm going to need oxygen after this show. Uh, Dave, is, Dave is frozen in time. Hopefully he, uh, oh, there he is. You're back. Nap Bruaria, Napalm Death, Frozen <laughs> Soul. Love that. I went on tour. I bond in that way. In my own life, I don't have a million records sitting behind me. I kind of listen to what I want to listen to. I have my own label. I do what I... And then I keep my headspace kind of free. Right now, I'm, I'm doing personally meditation, devotion, consciousness. I 
you know, I'm playing somber music for my spirit to rise. Sat Chit Ananda. Know your know your Sanskrit and be able be able to use your mind and your body to work together for your health and for where you want to be. Because you won't always be a young little whippersnapper like me. You know, uh, I'm 67. My next step's 77 and then 87. And time goes by fast. So that's what I got to say about that. Hey, I got, I got a question for you now that you mentioned that. Did you see Wild Wild Country on Netflix? Uh, I have not. It's very good, man. All Wild, right. Uh, very good. All right. I'll check that out. Yeah. Uh, um, here's one. Here's one for you. Um, well, Ugly and Proud Seven says not a second tier band. Both MDC and Seven Seconds were way ahead of their times progressively, but never broke up for twenty years and reunited for money. Always who they were. Bless their righteousness. Uh, you know. Okay. And here I am. I've been going forty four years. I did take five years to mm -hmm. capture my life and to, to heal myself. And I, I become a, a single father and I realized single father, fresh off drugs, it's time to, you know, get serious. And I worked in a parking lot in New York city <laughs> and I became a teacher assistant. I got my special ed degree from uh, long Island university. And I taught at the center for Develop disabilities. I was there on nine 11 in the New York area, but the wow. whole time I was still doing, you know, uh, you know, going on tour with Ron Staporio, going on tour with Molotov Cocktail, uh, and being part of that New York scene, uh, Stockyard Stoics. Brendan Beckowie is a great guy. Uh, life is just full of beauty. And uh, enjoy yourself. You get this one ride, everybody. Mm -hmm. And at the end, it doesn't matter how many credit cards you had or, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, you really have to express yourself and get your yah yas out. And I, and I root for everyone to do that, whether it be a show, a fanzine, a songwriter, movie maker, whatever you are, you know, go for that creative soul that's inside you and just carry love in your heart because, you know, we, we see things from our perspective, but everyone else has got another perspective and uh, just, you know, give everyone the cur courtesy. And when you give the courtesy, you get the courtesy. And, and my life is rocking now, you know, and, and uh, I want everyone to be rocking. It's uh, Susan, safe. Susan asks, uh, when are you coming to Tompkins Square Park again? June 11th. It's a Sunday, June 11th, with Urban Waste. Woo! Yep, All yep. Right. Fan, fan, fantastic. And uh, um, Michelle Shock's coming, too. Uh, she's going to play. I don't know if you know Michelle Shock. We're going to play some songs together. Cool. And her band, Sewage, is going to play. And uh, we're just building more and more things. I'm going to Europe. This year, we're going to play Rebellion again, playing an Italian fest. Love travel, love this band, but, you know, I live with someone with a 10-year-old, oh. so I'm trying to do it all. I don't want to live my life in airports, you know, uh, but I, I'm addicted to this stuff. I love being being part of the culture and music. And like I said, I've been making music close to 50 years and somewhat notably for 40, 40, you know, 40 plus of them. I'm blessed and just I, I wish the best for everybody. Cause, here's you know, a good here's a good one from your heart. Here's a good one from our pal uh, Jonathan Busky, uh, Smoking Word Podcast, uh, good friend of mine. Always loved the This Bloods for You album, which seemed to have more of a metal sound to it. Was that a conscious effort? Yeah, you know we we got a guitar player. Ron had finally left him to see, and I waited a year and a half. Like, please come back. And he just, you know, he just got out of the whole thing. Being in a band is not easy. <laughs> you really find out who people yeah. are in a band. Sure. You find sure. out who snores. You find out who doesn't shut up. You yeah. find yeah. out who's a pain in the ass, who steals shit, who yeah. is always looking for drugs. You yeah. know, you find that stuff out. And then all of a sudden you realize in a band, you're married to all that. It is a marriage, you know. And as we know, like Harley and John Joseph can be a very tumultuous marriage mm -hmm. you know and you know through the years the bad brains all of them black flag you know yep. people you know uh, love each other until they don't and um it's, you have to share stuff and it's all that part of compromise it's a macrocosm of the whole world the whole macro world we got to share this planet with people that's what it's all about even the jerks even the people that are stealing energy from it we have to share this and somehow live with live on the planet. 
unless we were going to become a murderer and get rid of them. So, and the same thing in a band, and it's very tough. Anyway, it was, uh, we were going for a more rock album. You know, we were, we were rocking out. We didn't look at it like metal, just where Gordon's skills were. Uh, but, you know, we had the chalk full of shit, and we had this place. <laughs> and, uh, you know, 1986 was a really weird year. Uh, hardcore yeah. was falling apart. Yeah, yeah. All the hardcore bands were going metal or crossover or going folk, or it was time for their YouTube album, or, you know, everyone was trying something else on, really. And so, there were bands that were just coming up that were like, true, and it kind of like became Melodicore, and, you know, Mr. Chi Experience, Green Day, uh, Song About Vavita, My Cheesy Girlfriend Who Got Away, you know, and it just became this, from Dead Cops to, you know, it was just a yeah. lot more humor, cutesy, Green Day, Junior Prom, and that's okay. It's all the evolution. But it was weird. It's changing. And living in me in the kind of world, like, when things changed, I didn't realize it so much until I was out there. And then I started channeling Divine and Elvis. And, you know, and just kind of morphed back into the 1990s, uh, being like a, a British punk band. <laughs> and hung out hey, in did, England. And did you, um, uh, Michael LaRouche says, did you, did you, he's asked a couple, did you ever see Gigi Allen play? I never saw Gigi Allen. I met, never met Gigi Allen. I've met his brother, played right. with his brother somewhere. And uh, I just missed that. That was in that 95 to 2000 sure. period that he yeah. became well known. And, uh, you know, I, I just kind of like, I, I was in Portland. I lived with Tom Pig. I worked on a submissive album. I put out one single in like five years, did maybe five gigs in five years. Yep. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, I got clean and sober. I went, I went into a hey, let me, uh, case. Hey, and Steven. I was at insurance. What's up? Hey, hey man. Didn't, hey, didn't you, didn't you, you guys played together, right? Out yes, there? we did. Tell us 20, about this. 23 years ago. Uh, this was a uh, benefit, I believe, for a fireman at the time. Yes. Um, and it, it was, was called Drusa Palooza 3. Yeah. He, he had, he had it, I think the guy's name was Drew, and I think yeah. he was fighting cancer. And uh, we, I had come to New York. That's when I got, you know, I got clean and sober. I brought my kid. I was living in Glen Cove in my parents' house. And uh, I started playing again. We started practicing, and all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, the guy who booked CBGBs was in the room next door. And, and of course, I went to practice. And the guys I was playing with played all MDC songs. He goes, is MDC here? I go, well, yeah. He goes, I'll give you $500 if you play CBGBs in four weeks. Oh, fuck yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> and and I, I got back on it and started doing it out of New York area in Glen Cove. Uh, uh, I had a bass player named Matt, Matt Van Cura. He came from... Uh, right near Port Jeff, where that gig was. I remember that show. It was a good time. It was yeah. a fun crowd. It was kind of like firemen and, you know, kind of a straighter Long Island crowd. <laughs> and I was, you know, and, and I got up there and said, you know, I'm a punk rocker and I might dislike the government or cops, but, you know, I sure like poor Jefferson and the crowd was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's one thing, you know, in this business, when you work in a room, you got to size up who you're playing for. Right what your yep. objectives are and communicate. Cause that's what we are. We're minstrels that communicate to people. That and, was always uh, a fun room to play. It was a really fun. great gig. And I remember that show, Drew Palooza. Huh. Right. Yeah, yeah. That was, we actually I, played a, another Drew Palooza show where it was, it was like the second one, I think. And they said, yep. do you want to either be the first band or the last band? And we said last, we went on it about 3 AM and it was still, Everybody was still there supporting. Oh, that's it. cool. That, it was that's fun. good. People can go home with that bad weather yeah. on the North Shore of Long Island. Yeah, right. But it, <laughs> it was something. That, I that was really cool. And we, there was a few gigs happening out in Long Island back then. We, we played with Naked Aggression. We played with, you know, just a bunch of good bands that were that, that were playing with each other. And uh, I was doing hanging out with Molotov Cocktail a lot. And the did, did NBC ever play something? We were young and going after it. We played with them in Boston, up at the place near Fenway. Yep. Yeah, All man. Right, it's beautiful to be on this beautiful day with you. 
And Steven, of, thank you. Well, millions of dead clones. Star I'll, see, Wars. I'll see you, Steven. Enjoy, enjoy. Yeah, it's life, been a pleasure, everybody. man. I love you, man. This has been a great time. Let's talk to each other. We'll talk about eating lunch when it comes to town. I love you all, the whole world. I love you. Nobody, nobody's written off. I love HR. I love everybody. Hey, you, you know, know what? Uh, you know what, Dave? Yo, here, yo, I, I have another picture here I want to put up. Shout right. out, shout out to Jerry Williams. Jerry, Jerry Williams, what a beautiful man. What a yeah. beautiful man. He yeah, recorded we, Multi-Death Corporation. And uh, you're just a beautiful man. We hung out in the van, went to gigs, you know, vegetarian, just, just sweet, intelligent, great, great sense of humor, and really a great ear. He's the guy who helped with that bad brain sound. That yeah. great, the big takeover, you know, yeah. uh, the, the echoey the, stuff. Yeah. That is Jerry Williams. And uh, a real New York original, you know, from the streets of the New York City, 1982, 81, 80. What a, what a great guy. Yeah. Uh, I just, I just want to say, uh, everybody out there, one more time, if on YouTube, I highly recommend the Punk Rock Vegan movie. It was directed by our friend and supporter, Moby, who will be coming back on the show. Uh, we're booking him now. Uh, this was very... Uh, very well done. And the first part of it really, really plays out like a good uh, uh, punk hardcore documentary. It, it, really very, great. One of the yeah. best. It's like New York hardcore personified, you know, and, and, and Ray Capo might be the balance of everybody in the New York area on one level or another. You can say Al Burrell, you can say Ian McKay, you can say Henry Rollins, you can say Vinny, you know, Stigma, but it's a real deal. Here's, here's, really a, here's an interesting question from our, our uh, resident historian, Chucky, Chucky Brown. Uh, can he speak on getting arrested, raided by the LAPD at shows backstage and the cops asking him to sign albums for them? Is that right? That, that, those are true stories on multiple occasions. You know, it's, it's, it's a weird feeling. Uh, they, you know, they pull you out. And, you know, I had the cops raid my apartment. We played on the roof of my house for the Pope. We all wore Pope hats. And uh, you know, and played this blood for you, boy. They got the they got the police, and they were there within two minutes, threatened to throw me off. But then they're walking me downstairs, they're carrying my equipment and everything else. They go, "Fuck, we're not carrying this stuff." And, and I'm telling them, I'm like, I'm a lost Catholic boy. Ever since they killed Kennedy, I've been disturbed. I wanted to play a peace punk show for the Pope, and they're like, they're like, just you know. And then after that, I knew all the cops in San Francisco. They'd be like, hey, Dave, stay away from there. It's going to be trouble. <laughs> trouble. Don't, don't open container over here. You know, get, you know get, uh, it's, a, it's a relationship we have. My, my brother was a New York City cop. Is that right? I mean, Your brother? And firemen and my whole family. Wow. All from Ozone Park and Jamaica, Queens. These are, you know, hardcore, you know, people, you know? Wow. And, you know, and part of the, the Irish mafia, the, the Irish coal miner, just hardworking people. My, my, my stepfather, Joe Hanlon, who adopted me and who I love. You know, wow. So I was brought up with, with an Irish thing, you know, with an Italian mother. And I love it. I love, you know, New York City, so beautiful. Blue bloods and all that, you know. I, hey, how about that? How about a, 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 a super chat from Jose? Says, yo, Dave. Could I get a happy 16th birthday to my brother Vinny from his brother Jose? Thanks for signing our records in Austin, bud. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday to you, to Vinny and whoever. People love you. Have a great life, man. Have a good life. You know, you don't get to get all messed up to have a great life. You know, save yourself. Moderation at most. Abstinence. I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be kicking around for 20 years. I'm gonna, be, you know, uh, you know, we, we'll be looking at these people because we're getting our, getting our Deepak Chopra, Oprah, vitamins. You know, we are, we are, we are going to be, we're going to be centurions, millions of darn centurions. <laughs> anyway, I love you. This is Dave. You're out. See you at Thompson Square Park. Hey, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. I love you, you man. Know you are the man. <laughs> you are the man. Listen to the New York Hardcore Chronicle show. Eat at the Urban Vegan Grill. 
Watch that Moby movie. Regards to Moby, guy's a genius. I love uh, you, bro. Check I out his you, videos on YouTube with GH Pligro. Some of the other Moby things. It's trippy stuff. He's we're working with Gwen Stefani and just really cool trippy stuff. You know, can't all be hardcore. That, that that's the way. You know, that's the way the higher powers created me. But everyone is not me. So enjoy Thank life. You. Hi, Thank Harley, you, Dave. Don Joseph, all you people, Vinny, Stefan, False Prophets, I love you. All you Cause for Alarm guys, all you people, Murphy's Law, and all them other bands. Nothing but love from Dave Dichter. We'll see you. I'll see you, Dave. Take care. Bye-bye. Wow. Man. Is, it, is that right, Gary? He says... I watch all the shows and there have been some awesome guests, but this one was definitely spe- absolutely, man. Absolutely. I knew it was going to be a wild ride. Uh, Dave Dichter, very special individual. Uh, you want to talk about hardcore and punk rock and, and you know, uh, and people with a good soul and a good heart uh, who are still in this game and who are still giving, man. That's a, that's a great, great. Wow. Wow is right, Marla. Man, I don't, I don't even know what to say. You know, I'm just, I'm just in awe that I have the opportunity to do this show and that you people are a part of it. I mean that, man. I'm not even trying to be corny here, but we got a good thing going. I'm so, you know, Dave talks about people, you know, about being blessed. I'm blessed. I, I get to host this show coming up on three years, man. You know, three, we're coming up on three years this show. Uh, I'm tr- actually trying to get Moby on the three-year anniversary show. Um, yeah, it was incredible. Uh, Gregor, thank you. Um, yeah, what, what a great guest, you know, uh, just, just good, good, good stuff. Um, you know, yeah, best show. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate it. Yeah. How about that? Long Island guy at Queens, Queens, you know, Hey, a Long Island guy, huh? That's right. That's right. That's wild. I, you know what? I, I have not moved. I Usually I do stuff. I move around. I, this has been like so fun and so riveting today. Yeah, it was great. Once, once yeah. in a while, once in a while, we, we hit it out of the ballpark. You, you know, know what? It, it, I mean, yeah. we've had some killer shows and his just his energy yeah. was infectious. Millions of Daryl cats. Exactly. <laughs> there he is. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was, it really was. He was great. I mean, I, I knew like from the, the pre-show when you were like, Hey, the show hasn't even started yet. <laughs> it was yeah. just like the end. We floored it from the second we started. Yeah, yeah. All awesome. right, man. Cool. I'll uh, I'll see you back here on Wednesday for Skeeter. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll be. Long I'll be. Long I'll be in the represent. <laughs> I'll be in the box. Right, I'll see you later. Whew! There you have it, man. Yeah, Dave has a great fill and flash. Whoa. Hey, Phil, somebody asked me about having you on the show. And I'm, I'm extending an invitation, Phil. If you ever have the, 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 the uh, desire uh, and the composure, uh, love to have you on the show, man. So the, the, uh, the invitation's out there. Um, you know, Strong Island represent. Thank you, Chucky. That was a great, great, great question, man. Uh, Listen, I'm the hardcore ambassador. Well, you know, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Um, there's just an intrinsic uh, historical value to this stuff, and, and, and it means a lot to me, and I enjoy doing it. And shows like today, you know, s- sometimes, you know, sometimes we get into the, the rhythm here and we're doing shows and, you know, but this one was really, this was jello, a- a- absolutely. Uh, yeah, there's an SSD control book coming out. Uh, coming out. I don't have the date yet, but when the date is locked down, we're going to do an event at Generation Records here in New York City. Um, hey, Gaz, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, you know, Jello is one person I have not reached out to. Um, I've never reached out to Jello about coming on the show. Maybe I should. Um, so, um, you know. Yeah, New York Hardcore killing it for three years now. Imagine that. Coming up, April's three uh, three years. That's crazy. 
God. Man. Woo. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Um, you know, lots of shows coming up. Got Skeeter. Got Danny Garcia. Got Louis from Carnivore. Got the big 250th episode with Lars. Got uh, Abaddon from Venom. Got the Slicky Boys. Got Phil, you know, from San Francisco. And got Mr. Rusty Pistachio from H2O. So, yeah. there's Jimmy G's been on twice, but... We'll get Jimmy G back on again. I was just talking to him. We'll get, we'll get, um, oh, uh, that's a valid one. Uh, Phil from Sacred Reich. Sure. Sure. Thank you, Joe Frank. Thanks everybody. Hey, Busky, if you're still watching, uh, nice, to, nice to see you, Busky. Always coming with a, with a great, uh, smart question, you know, uh, appreciate that. So, uh, well, Isaac's been on a couple times, but we, you know, we got we gotta get we gotta we gotta get him back on. Uh is that right? The exploited, you know, I, I reached out to Wadi. I wasn't sure if like he's he's back out on the ball field again. Is that right? Hey Paul Stone, when are you coming back to New York so we can sing together on stage? Uh I I, I didn't realize Wadi was back uh back doing it. Um, you know. Uh GBH, uh, I, I mean, uh Dave said that he that he's playing um um, they're doing a whole tour. I saw the dates. I don't think they're announced yet. Get Rollins. Yeah, we got to get Rollins on the show. Yeah, Danny, Danny, Danny Diablo, fan favorite. Yes, Marla, fan favorite. Um, you know. Okay, yeah, I guess Waddy Waddy's got to be cool. Yo, Waddy just don't get Waddy gets on stage. He don't give a fuck. He's like, I have another heart attack on stage. Waddy is so determined to go out with his boots on. He don't give a fuck. You know. Yeah. Yes. Abaddon is coming on, man. Abaddon. Abaddon is coming on. Hail, hail Venom. Yep. Abaddon is coming on. It's going to be a good one. Um, what? What else? Hold on. Yeah. Dickie Barrett. Listen, D Dickie Barrett, yeah, he's not on Kimmel anymore. That'd be a good one. Uh, Dickie couldn't come on when he was on Kimmel, but, you know, that said. Hey, once again, this was the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Thank you, everybody. Hell of a show. Uh, what can I say? I'll see you on Wednesday. Until then, do good things, and good things will come to you.